These two 7-8 teams know what it's like to bring home the big trophy. Chicago Mount Carmel is back on familiar turf, seeking their 11th state title in 13 tries. And Prospect won back-to-back -back state titles a few years ago. It's the Caravan and the Knights, next on the IHSA TV Network. An unseasonably warm evening here in Champaign as we get ready to decide the 7A state champions. Hello and welcome to Memorial Stadium. I'm Lee Hall. Prospect, no strangers to this field the last few years. They're going for their third state title in the last five seasons. Mount Carmel, no stranger to state championships. They've won uh, 10, but they've never won one in 7A. For the call of tonight's ball game, let's go upstairs to Tom Stocker and Lee Turnbow. All right, Lee, thank you very, very much. Well, with these two programs, Mount Carmel, once they finally won their first state championship in 1980, it broke open the floodgates. They're going for their 11th state title. Meanwhile, Prospects emerge as one of the powers in the Chicago area here in the 21st century. And as Lee mentioned, they have a chance for their third state championship in five years. Not bad for a program that had never even won a playoff game before 2001. Now they've won 17 of their last 18. So we got a couple of programs here that certainly are no strangers to this championship game league. No strangers. You look at Mount Carmel, a state powerhouse since 1980, 10 and 2 in their 12 previous championship games, playing in their 13th championship game. The Prospect Knights, on the other hand, are the coach Brett Perlman. Two state championships, 2001, 2002, really has this program on the move, especially in Class 7A. All right, let's see how these two teams made it here to the semifinals as we take a look, first of all, for Mount Carmel with four victories where they basically steamrolled the opposition, had a battle with their arch rival, St. Rita, beating St. Rita for the second time this year and making it here with a victory over Edwardsville. Meanwhile, for the Knights of Mount Prospect, they made it here four consecutive victories. In fact, they've won 12 in a row coming into this game tonight, and they made it here off the semifinal win, holding Belvedere to 31 points under their scoring average in the semifinal victory. For the Mount Carmel Caravan, well, I tell you what, they've got quite a duo, quite a law firm, maybe a CPA firm. Sulo and Sulo, and Dominic Sulo certainly accounted for a lot of their offense. Dominic Sulo, the Tony Lawless Award winner, is the most valuable play player in the Catholic League. Great running back. His older brother, Derek Sulo, actually his twin brother, one minute older, He's a great, strong safety for the Caravan. They make things go offensively and defensively for Mount Carmel. Defensively for the Caravan, linebacker Mark Oliver has anchored a defense that has really turned it up a notch in the playoffs. Mark Oliver, one of the best juniors in the state, 15 sacks. Him and Stevie Feiler at the linebacker spot, really key to the Caravan defense. He's a special one. Coming into this year for the Prospect Knights, quarterback Matt Bowman figured what he would have the starting job. He didn't. They started somebody else instead, Jeff Sobey. But all of a sudden, four games into the season, they put Bowman back in as the starter, and they've really taken off since then. As he goes, that's how goal prospect. Over 1,000 yards passing, over 700 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns, really the leader. Didn't start the first three games, as you mentioned, Tom, but since he's been in there, they've really moved the football. Now, this defense, extremely quick. In fact, more than one of their opponents this year has said Prospect has the best defense they've played all year, and their linebacker, Tony Barati, has really anchored things inside. Tony Barati, a hustler, a gamer, a guy who's like a coach on the field, the leader of the defense emotionally for Prospect. One of the things that Prospect must do tonight is keep in check the running back tandem of Sulo and Dorch if they want to come out with a victory tonight against the Caravan. Well, the question may be, by the time this one's over, who has the edge in time of possession? So we'll talk about that, obviously, as the game unfolds, as we get ready to meet these two teams here in the Class 7A state championship. And uh, in this contest, I mentioned the time of possession. We'll talk about that, as I mentioned, as we go now to stadium public address announcer Jeff Fritzen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for the Class 7A State Football Championship. First, the defense for the Prospect Knights. Number two, a cornerback, Parker O'Mara. A cornerback, number nine, Patrick Burton. At safety, number four, Mike Dazzo. 
As safety number 27, John Munns. And linebacker number 30, Pat Mack. And linebacker number 33, Max Sherwin. And linebacker number 57, Tony Barati. Defensive line number 45, Rick Richardson. Defensive line number 56, Matt Brzezinski. Defensive line number 62, Mike Kriegermeyer. And defensive lineman number 83, Dan Kozak. The Knights are coached by Brent Perlman. Now the offense for Mount Carmel. The flanker number four, Matthew Banks. And wide receiver number nine, Brian Mulcrone. The tight end number 88, Ron Newcomb. The quarterback number 10, Carter Kopak. And running back number 27, Dominic Sulo. At running back number 28, Larry Dorch. At tackle number 71, Tim Cavanaugh. At guard number 78, Darzell Wright. At center number 56, Eric Eck. At guard number 73, Arthur Ray. And at tackle number 79, Kevin Novosich. The caravan is coached by Frank Lenti. We have the starting lineups here for the championship game in Class 7A. The Chicago land area battle between uh, Mount Carmel from the south side and Prospect out of Mount Prospect. Now, when you talk about Mount Carmel, I mentioned Sulo and Sulo, but maybe Sulo and Dorch offensively a big key for them. The Cape Crusaders, 1-1A. One one of course, Sulo, the Tony Loss Award winner, is the most valuable player in the Catholic League. Him and Dorch are unbelievable one and two combination. Captain Carter, even though the running backs get all the glory, Captain Carter, Kopak, the quarterback, he runs the show. He runs a severe option attack for Mount Carmel. He must make good decisions. And the Wild West right there, you'll see that Prospect will go in a shotgun. They've got to sit there and be an Old West shootout for the Prospect Knights. Mount Carmel's got to sit there and not get into a running gun with them. Meanwhile, for the Knights, Max the Knife, meaning, of course, Max Sherwin. This guy just basically does it all. Max Sherwin, 32 out of 35 PATs, 8 out of 12 field goals. He'll play linebacker. He'll play wide receiver. He's got 28 catches. Unbelievable. Never comes off the field. Quick on quick. It's going to be a matchup of the Prospect defense especially the linebackers, and Mack and Sherwin and Barati against the Mount Carmel Caravan running backs and clock eaters. In the semifinals one week ago against Tom, Mount Carmel had a 15-play drive and a 17-play drive against Edwardsville and just ate the clock in the second half. Mount Prospect cannot let that happen. Here we are in Champaign, about 140 miles south of Chicago. Mount Carmel on the south side, Mount Prospect, the home of the Prospect Knights up in the northwest Chicago suburbs. But they come down here the Memorial Stadium to determine the 7 8 championship. Wind right now, southeast, 15 miles an hour. It will be a factor around the field. 54 degrees, the temperature. Cloudy, there is a forecast for some showers possibly moving in later on this evening. Mount Carmel will be the visitors wearing the white. Prospect is the home team wearing their light blue. As getting ready. To kick for the Knights will be Max Sherwin. And the caravan will send three deep. Dominic Sulo and Tim Brown back to receive the kick. And here we go. We're underway in the battle for the 7 8 title. Sulo will take it into the end zone. It'll automatically come out as a touchback to the 20 yard line as we. We'll take a look at the respective teams lineups here as we get this first drive underway. The offensive line, Kavanaugh, right. The center, Eric Eck. The guard, Arthur Ray and Kevin Novosich, the tackle. The backfield, Kopak, the quarterback. 
There's the big running tandem of Sulo and Dorch. Matt Banks, the flanker. Mulcrone, the wide receiver. Ron Newcomb is the tight end. First down from the 20 yard line. Pro set backfield behind Carter Kopak. Hands it off. First handoff goes to Dominic Sulo. And he carries tacklers for five yards to the 25 yard line. Defensively, they run basically a 5 2. The interior will be Darzell Wright, Riandon Kennedy, and Ron Newcomb. The linebackers up on the line will be Ryan Glenn and Connor Lucas. The inside linebackers will be uh, Pat Mack and Tony Barati. And uh, the secondary, Parker O'Mara, Mike Dazzo, John Munns, and Patrick Burnton. Second down and five. Straight up ahead once again, it goes to Sulo. Picks up three more, bringing up a third and short coming up. Even though it looks like Kopak is just handing the ball off and not doing much, he reads the option very effectively for the caravan, makes great decisions. Watch when he does the pitch. He will pitch it to the running backs in strike. They never have to move their hands when Carter pitches in the ball, makes great decisions. For Prospect, and you see him in the blue, they've got to sit there and be very technique-oriented and read their keys against this option attack for the caravan. On third and short, once again, Sulo hit at the line of scrimmage. He's close to first down yardage, but looks like uh, he's got enough to get the first down for Mount Carmel. We'll wait and see exactly where they spot it, and they didn't get a favorable spot. It's shy of the 30-yard line, and so the prospect defense gets a three and out on the first series. And Frank Lenny, the Mount Carmel coach, did not agree with that call. I thought it was a, a short spot as well. So back to punt for the caravan is Ron Newcomb. Fair catch called for at the 37-yard line. Parker O'Mara with the fair catch, a 34-yard punt. And so it'll be Prospect with the ball for the first time offensively as quarterback Matt Bowman will lead him out. Take a look, their offensive line. Bruce Powers, Zusefix, Baratti, and Brzezinski. In the backfield, Bowman with Evan Daniel, the running back. Four wideouts, Hanneman, O'Brill, who's really come out on the playoffs, along with Brunton and Sherwin. From the 38, this is Bowman keeping. Oh, he almost broke up tackle and had a big gainer. Slowed up at the 45, and he gets up to the 49-yard line for a first down. There's the defensive line. They run a 4-3 defense. Richardson, Brzezinski, Kriegermeyer, and Kozak. That's the defense. Linebackers, Mack, Barati, and Sherwin. Prospects, defensive backs are O'Mara, Burton, Dazzo, and Munns. Mont Carmel running a 52 defense here against the Knights. Play action fake. And just over leading Patrick Burton on the pass was Bowman. Burton this year, 16 catches, 301 yards, and three touchdowns. Had a nice game in the semifinals. You see this a lot out of prospect. They'll run multiple formations, run a little no huddle. They'll run some zone plays, some power plays. You see Mount Carmel, their big front three defensive linemen, average 236 pounds, and an average lineman. Uh, for Prospect is 216 pounds, so Mount Carmel has a little bit of edge in terms of the beef department. Evan Daniel, there the running back behind Matt Bowman. Now out of the shotgun. Bowman looks like a busted play. Looked like he wanted to hand off to Daniel and then had to keep it as he goes to the 47-yard line and picks up close to five yards. You know, Matt Bowman on the year time's got 715 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns. That looks like a quarterback draw all the way. Got a nice block from his tailback, Evan Daniels, the spring. But you'll see Bowman touch the ball all the time. He wants the ball in his hands. So call it third and six from the 47 of Mount Carmel. Play action fake to Daniel. Pass caught for a first down at the 38-yard line. 
The pass caught by Mike O'Brill, who has been their go-to receiver in the postseason. O'Brill, 35 catches, 469 yards on the season. Does a nice job getting the first down for the Knights. Bowman sit there, flash fake across. Freezing the linebackers, you see Oliver not getting back in his drop zone quick enough. Puts it right on the numbers to O'Brill. Now here comes Oliver to clean up the tackle. Nice job of holding on to the ball by O'Brill. So first down for the Knights. Bowman may be changing the play at the line. And it looked like they took too much time. Penley markers down. Playcock did expire there. And of course, here at Memorial Stadium, you had those big 25 second clocks on either end. But sometimes when you change the play, you're not used to looking. You see defensive coordinator, it's Frank Sledi, uh brother David Lenny, defensive coordinator for the caravan calling us up to play in. Referee is Kevin McMurray out of Willow Springs. So it makes it first and 15 from the 43 of the caravan. Daniel getting the delay, sniffed out very quickly by Ron Newcomb, the 6'3 junior defensive tackle. They started the formation to the wide side. They went motion to the right side. Newcomb just comes right down the line of scrimmage from the backside and runs down the play. Excellent job by Mount Carmel defense. Mount Carmel defense and the prospect defense, both very, very quick sideline to sideline. You have to run straight in to have any of uh, success. Second and 14 from the Mount Carmel 44 for prospect. Bowman. Pumps once, he's in trouble. The pocket collapse, he's brought down near midfield. Steven Filer there, Ron Newcomb among the tacklers for the caravan. And they're gonna give the sack to Ryan Glenn, the linebacker, he's got 11 of them on the air. Bowman looking, gives a little pump fake action right there, now he wants to go deep. The route doesn't develop. Looking, looking, turns back in, and Ryan Glenn, number 41, is there to make the sack, along with Stevie Filer. So brings up third and 22. Credit that one probably to a good coverage by the secondary, a coverage sack. As Prospect paces third and very long. Bowman again sets up the throw. Has a man open, off the hands, out of bounds across the way, looking for Patrick Burnton. Burnton, the 6'1 senior with over 300 yards in receptions this year. It'll be fourth and 22. And Prospect will bring in punter Andrew Butkus. Nice job by secondary from Mount Carmel. Of, they have a nice one-on-one -on -one coverage against Burton. Burton, a very athletic receiver. Now Mount Prospect's going to try to pin Caravan back inside their own 20. Butkus will try to pin the Caravan deep. He's averaging over 33 yards a punt this year. Has the wind at his back. And they let it bounce. Matthew Banks letting it bounce, and it's down by the Knights at the nine-yard line after the punt of 40 yards. No score here with 6.39 remaining in the opening quarter. Both teams seemingly still feeling each other out right now. I was now. just going to say that time. You get the, the sense that they're feeling each other out, trying to, to probe and see where there's a weakness on that defensive front. But both teams are very well coached, very well scouted. You don't win the state championships that they've won without being very well prepared. So Mount Carmel starts the drive at its own nine yard line. As Kopak hands it off to Dominic Sulo. Sulo coming off the semifinals against Edwardsville where he had 111 yards and two touchdowns. At 177 yards Dominic against St. Rita in the Walker. quarters. 100. 211 yards in the second round, 98 yards in the first round. He's just been a real horse in the backfield for Mount Carmel. The combination of, you know, Sulo and Dorch weighs on the opponents because you've got a game plan for both of them. You just can't sit there and key on one of the running backs for the caravan. Sulo and Dorch indeed in the backfield. The play action fake to Dorch, and this is Sulo, and he has the first down out of bounds on the near sidelines. At the 20 yard line, Parker O'Mara, Mike Dazzo out of the secondary combined to make the stop. 
Sulo over 1,700 yards on the year, 8.7 every time he touches the ball with 24 touchdowns. The key in those plays for the caravan is watch Kolpak pitch the ball. It's a hard, firm pitch, but the running backs never have to break stride so they don't lose any yardage, and they're always getting the pitch with their shoulders turned upfield and running downhill. Kind of like passing the baton on track in those relays. You don't want the baton to slow down. You don't want that runner in the backfield to slow down. Dorch twisting his way right up the middle to the 24-yard line. Stopped by linebacker Tony Barati, who is their leading tackler with 70 stops on the year. And you talk about Sulo so much, you know, Larry Dorch, 187 carries, 1,270 yards. He's got 17 touchdowns as well for the Caravan. So it's like, you know, 1-1-A, which guy, you know, don't you let beat yourself is one of those guys and most people pick Sulo and that's where Dortch gets all the yards. Let's see you've got basically 3,000 yards of rushing offense between those two in the backfield. On the option Sulo with the short side of the field stopped at the 27 yard line. Parker O'Mara in on the tackle out of the secondary. And Pat Mack comes right across from his linebacker Pat spot Pat but Mack. O'Mara really turns his play inside. You see Mount Carmel, they're very quick. They get to their spots very quick. Look at the pitch right in the hands, and look at that Mac come all the way across and making a nice tackle in the open field. Good example of the quickness that Prospect has had in, on its defense all season long. They can run with you sideline to sideline. Third and three from the 27. Sula with a hole through the left side. has got the first down. And then some to the 37-yard line. Finally stopped by John Munch, the 5'10 junior. I asked Coach Brent Perlman, I said, how do you simulate Mount Carmel's very option in just such a short time? He says, usually by Wednesday we'll get this, and look at where the fullback goes, the halfback. He'll sit there right between the guard and tackle, find a little gap, get the shoulders turned up, nice tackle, but he said it's very hard. He said he probably wouldn't have it down until Wednesday or Thursday in terms of almost the speed that Mount Carmel runs this at. It was a 10-yard running play. First down from the Caravan 37. Swing pass over to Sulo. Ridden out of bounds on the sidelines by Patrick Burton. 30 tackles for Burton on the year. But another big game, a big gain right there for Mount Carmel as they mix in a little swing pass. A little formation that we haven't seen, a little motion with the swing out to Sulo. Catch the ball in stride. Nice job by the quarterback, Cole Back, to deliver that ball. Mount Carmel trying to give Prospect a little more to think about defensively. Early right now, Mount Carmel almost doubling Prospect in yards per play. Nearly five yards of snap so far for the caravan. Dorch trying to get outside. Slowed up nicely by Kozak. That allowed the rest of the prospect defense to force him out of bounds, but not before. Dorch picks up the first down at the Mount Carmel 49. And Rick Richardson really did a nice job from his defensive spot of forcing that ball to bounce outside. And defense all about hustle. As you see Frank Lenny, and how many times has he been down here? He might as well just build a summer home <laughs> down here. I'm, I'm serious, Tom, there's many times he's been down here. What a great program the Caravan have under Frank Lenny. That also includes coming down to watch his son Frank play for Ron Zook and the Fighting Illini here at Memorial Stadium. Straight ahead, Sulo, just a dive play to the 46 of Prospect. And folks, if you like offensive line play, you're really going to like the Caravan because they are technicians on the offensive line. They play with great leverage. They get underneath the pads of Prospect. Prospect is very quick defense, but you watch Mount Carmel, you watch the line play, they are like technicians. They get the leverage, they stay down, they st stay low, and they fire out the football consistently. Spoken like a coach, if you're a fan of line play. Here we go as back, pitches it out. You know, it's the old line, you know. Well, that's where the games are won. Yeah, it's I know where it is. The trenches, but everybody usually likes to watch the football, but that's not where the games are run. And you really have to appreciate how well they're coached. The offensive line, as you see Brett Perlman coaching his defense up, how well these teams are prepared game in, game out. You know, he's got two underneath his belt. Now he's going for his third Brett Perlman. He knows how to get the job done, and he can coach him up with anybody in the state. Third and three from the 44 of Prospect. And early motion. Looked like Arthur Ray, the right guard, left early for Mount Carmel. It'll cost the Caravan five. And I venture to say that Mount Carmel might have one of the biggest offensive lines. Five-yard penalty, we see third down. See referee Kevin McMurray. One of the biggest offensive lines in the state playoffs. Mount Carmel Caravan offensive line averages six foot, 261 pounds for a high school offensive line. Mount Prospect just 6'2", 204 on the defensive line. So decided edge for the caravan. 
But as Brent Perlman said, you know, we've been outsized all year. So yep. what else is new? Kopak dropping straight back. Throws it out, has a man open for a first down at the 39-yard line. Straight pass right there going to Matthew Banks, 5'10 senior, making his 19th catch of the year. Matthew Banks does a nice job of coming back for the football. Just gets about two yards past the first down marker. Comes back towards the football. You see what we're talking about, how huge the Mount Carmel offensive line is, 261 pounds. That's average, folks. That is average. The front four for Prospect, just a, a tick under two, you know, 205, so a big advantage for the caravan. 11 yards on that passing play, and it's first down for Mount Carmel. A drive that began back on the nine-yard line. Go pack. The pitch goes to Dorch. Trying to get a lead block over Three on the sideline from Ron Newcomb. Dorch forced out of bounds at the 35-yard line after a gain of about four. And Mount Carmel has rushed for almost 3,900 yards, almost 3,900 yards on the season. Pass for just over 900 yards. But the reason why the Vera option is so successful is because they split you out. You see the offensive plays. Mount Carmel has run 13 to just seven for prospect, but they widen you out with your gap and your split responsibility, constantly probing with those halfbacks. And right now the caravan averaging five yards a snap. That play goes to the 29-yard line. It'll bring up third and one. Dorch with the carry for the caravan. In fact, they're going to take a measurement. He's close enough. They need to get the ball right to the 28-yard line. Looks like he's shy just a little. The clock stopped with 2.56 remaining in the opening period. This game is scoreless, but right now Mount Carmel with the best sustained drive so far for either team. Watching the game last week in the semifinals, Mount Carmel and Edwardsville, as we see, they're just going to be a little bit short. They had a 15 and a 17 play drive against Edwardsville. Edwardsville not, never got the ball back. You can't score without the ball, and that's what Mount Carmel wants to do. They didn't want to break the big one against you, Tom. They sit there and want to go four or five yards, four or five yards. Let's move the sticks. Let's get first downs. That's what the Vera option offense is based on, moving the sticks. And that 17 play drive took over eight minutes in that semifinal win over the Tigers. Quick snap, keeping Kopak. He's got a seam and he's got a first down to the 23 yard line and a fresh set of downs coming up for Mont Carmel. You know, Kopak has carried the ball 87 times for 286 yards. He's completed 61 out of 124 for 825 yards, seven touchdowns, six interceptions, but that's not where his value is to the Mount Carmel Caravan. His value is running this option offense and getting people in the right place and making the decisions on the edge. First down from the prospect 23 in the scoreless game. Straight hand off, quick hitter on the left side as Dominic Sulo gets the call. You know, after the Fenwick game, the last regular season game, back in halftime of that game, he said, I called the offensive line out. He didn't sense there was the fire. He didn't sense there was the, the determination. One of two turning points late in the year. The other was a meeting just before they went into the playoffs where the team got together and said, we're not happy with the way this, the, they're playing sloppy. They're not playing with any desire. And boy, they've turned it up in the playoffs. Second and eight. Kopak on the option. Puts his head down and dives to the 17 yard line. John Munns again on the stop from the secondary. Tony Barati hustled down from his defensive line position again. Does a nice job of pursuit. Mount Carmel very quick. Played great responsibility, gap technique. You got to be very disciplined against an option offense because if you suck in one time or miss your gap one time, it's going to lead to a big play. Third down. Now Kopak on the option, and it's thrown for a loss. Coming up, cornerback Patrick Burton to throw the play for a loss back at the 20-yard line. And Pat Burton had the pitchman responsibility on his side, saw the action coming his way, comes up from his secondary position, and watch how he closes in. Nice job, Kopak with the fake to the fullback. Gives a nice pitch, but Burton comes flying up out of nowhere, and bam! Makes a nice open field tackle, doesn't allow the running back to get outside him, keeps his contained responsibility for a negative play. Well, they had two blockers. They had one blocker ahead of the running back, but there were two defenders. Fourth down. Kopak to throw. Intercepted and dropped. In and out of the hands of Tony Barati at the 20-yard line, and so 
Prospect will take it over on downs at its own 20 yard line. And I don't know if he could have went all the way, but he just stepped in front as in hook zone and, and got the F ball and he could have been pick six the other way. 31 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing to score after we take this time out. Well, Mont Carmel's most promising drive so far in the game comes up empty on the unsuccessful conversion of fourth down, and so it'll be the Prospect Knights with it at their own 20-yard line with 31 seconds to go in the opening quarter of the 7A championship game at Memorial Stadium. Out of the shotgun, Daniel getting the handoff. Breaks through the tacklers and gets up to the 27-yard line. Picks up seven, bringing up third down, I should say second down and three. Really didn't even talk about Evan Daniel in the pregame, but he's a coach's all-state selection in Class 7A. He's got over 1,300 yards of rushing and nine touchdowns on the season for the Knights. Semifinals, 141 yards, three touchdowns in their semifinal victory over Belvedere. here. That is the end of the first quarter. Prospect nothing. Mount Carmel nothing. Second quarter coming up as we hear from your local sponsors. No score after one quarter. Mount Carmel and Prospect 0-0. We are with Frank Lenti Jr. on the Mount Carmel sideline. He came here twice in 2000, 2002 with Dad as a player. Tell me, uh, you're kind of pacing the sidelines. You're having a tough time watching, aren't you? Yeah, I don't, I don't really like the feeling of not having no control over what's going on out there. So, you know, I'm nervous for these guys. I was in their shoes two years ago. It's a, it's a really enjoyable time, but it's nerve-wracking. Like I said, having no control over anything. Tell me what it's like for your dad back here after a couple of years of not being here. Oh, uh, that was his main thing. After, after being down here, then they had the rough. Six and six year, he goes, you know, this this has really been this has been rough on us. You know, we're used to coming down here every year. And then two years of not coming down, he said he doesn't like sitting at home on Thanksgiving weekend watching all these other teams winning state titles. Tell me about how your career is going now with the fighting Illini, wide receiver, kick holder. Yeah, we're having we had a couple tough years, but you know, we're young, got a lot of guys who played this year. Um, you know, we're definitely coming through. Got some good guys coming in. We're going to get some good recruits in here, and we're going to get this thing rolling. You know, Coach Zook, uh, he's not going to let us slow down at all. He's going to stay on us, and uh, the fighting line will be going good here in a year. All right, we'll let you get back to your team, buddy. All right, thank you. Appreciate all right, Frank Lenti Jr. is wearing out this sideline, walking back and forth, Tom. He wants to get out there and play back upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Lee. He's going to help them. They're going to lower this field five feet before next season. So I think Frank's already trying to get him a head start there on the sidelines. Second and seven from the 38 yard line for Prospect. And suddenly, Evan Daniel has become quite the weapon for them. They're getting him blocking, and he is getting room to run. And they go to Daniel again, dancing his way up the middle. Not much room that time to the 39 Daniel yard line. Picks up just a yard and will bring up third and about six. And what Mount Prospect wants to do right now, Tom, is control a little bit of his clock. Mount Carmel had the ball for eight minutes in the first quarter, and it seemed like the Prospect Knights never got a hold of the football to get anything going. And you see that in the first quarter, eight minutes and six seconds for Mount Carmel, as opposed to just under four minutes for Mount Prospect. Never had the football, so he can't do anything with it offensively. Third down from the 39-yard line. And a timeout taken by the Knights. We've got a timeout on the field. 10-22 remaining in the second quarter. No score. Prospect in Mount Carmel after we hear from your local sponsors. Take a look, Mount Carmel, no stranger to the playoffs. 22 times overall prospect emerging as a power here in the 21st century. Playoff record 78 and 11 for Mount Carmel, 17 and 5 for Prospect. Pass incomplete at the 33. Really good, good defense provided by Chris Williams on the intended receiver, and it'll bring up fourth down and Prospect. Move the ball a little, but we'll have to punt the football away against the win. Nice job by Williams from his cornerback spot to fang that play, just getting his hand in at the last minute. Now Mount Prospect forced to punt. Andrew Butkus punted 21 times in the season coming into this game. 
and again gets it away against the wind. Matthew Banks will let it roll and he'll stay away from it. On Carmel. After that punt of 46 has averaged starting every drive right around the 14 15 yard line. They have not had great field position. But in their type of offense, they run time really doesn't make a difference because they don't open it up that much. They want to sit there and pound Dorch. They want to pound Sulo. They run, run behind that big offensive line and control the clock and tempo. So if they start in their 15, yeah, it really doesn't make a much difference because they run the same style of offense pretty much no matter where they're at in the field. So first and 10 for the caravan from the 16 yard line. Kopak hands off to Sulo and the pile with blockers and tacklers just drives ahead to the 21 yard line for a gain of five. Running behind the left side of that offensive line, Tim Cavanaugh, Darzell Wright open up the holes, but on Carmel, watch the speed with which the halfbacks get to the line of scrimmage. It's not a weak type of offense where they line the guy up in the tailback position. These guys, the halfbacks, Dorch and Sulo, are sprinting to the line of scrimmage, and that's when Kopak gives them the ball, and when they get to the second level, that's when they make their big yards. Kopak 253, Wright 257, and that's the small side of the line. Straight ahead on the carry as it goes to Sulo to the 27 28 yard line because you look the other side of the line Ray at 279 and Novosich at 292. Those are some big boys and you see those footballs on the back of the helmet for the caravan. Those are great plays. Look at that. You see them on the offensive lineman. They have as much job to do as the running backs more responsible for touchdowns than the running backs because they got a block for the boys. A first down on the carry by Sulo from the 28. First down for the caravan. Sulo slams straight ahead and is up to the 32 yard line, hit by the linebacker, the sophomore, Pat Mack. And a nice job by defensive lineman Mike Kriegermeyer right there, number 62. He's a wrestler. Won a heavyweight title, wrestled about 215 pounds, won a regional title. As a heavyweight wrestler, he's got great leverage, plays with great technique. He actually shut his blocker and made the tackle on that play. Well, then at 215, you give a lot of weight away in the heavyweight class. But he was the only heavyweight they had on the wrestling squad. On the keep, Kopech has got a lane and a first down to the 41 yard line. Kopech on the keeper for the first Brought down from behind by John Munns. Because they run the halfbacks, so quick, watch Kopak takes it. Look how John fast he gets down the line of scrimmage, makes that fake, gets to the edge, turns it up, still has the pitch, man. You see Dazzle coming over and making that tackle from a safety spot, but another good decision, run the option. And people don't understand how quick a quarterback has to make that decision on offense, whether he's going to pitch it or keep it or give it to the fullback. Neither team's been able to score here in the second quarter of the 7 8 championship game. Kopak keeps, pitches to Dorch. Dorch runs head on into Mike Dazzo. Well, not before Dorch gets it up to the 49 yard line and sets up a second and short. And Dorch does a nice job of finishing this run. Watch Kopak. Watch what I mean about the pitch. Right in the hands, never has to move, but watch Dorch lower the shoulder, get that extra two or three yards, even four or five yards. That's how you finish a run. So it brings up second and three. And so far, this prospect defense has been on the field a long time already in this game. Dorch straight ahead through the right side to the prospect 49 yard line before running into a host of light blue jerseys. You see the people making the trip down from Chicago a couple days after Turkey Day with all their Mount Carmel gear on. They are no strangers to the state finals, be it at Bloomington or here in Champaign. I, as we take a measurement right now, I happen to be my first year doing the football finals, 1980, when Bill Bars brought the team down uh, to Bloomington and beat Hinsdale South. Bill Bars, of course, went on the coach at Illinois Benedictine College as well. That's pretty close there. Kevin McMurray signals first down. Take a look. There is our crew, Andrew Stefik II, Ted Scudrianos, Stephen Garbasiak, Kevin McMurray, the referee, and Michael Bennett, the five men in black and white who won the honor with their great work through the year of calling a state championship game, giving up a lot of their time. 
Dorch, I should say Sulo, to the prospect 46 yard line, tackled by Max Sherwin. Nice job from Sherwin coming down, and you've got to sit there and be responsible for your technique and your key against this fair option attack from Mount Carmel. Every time, every play, you've got to do the same thing. Take a look, that's Krieger Meyer. Dominic Sulo. Got a couple of great pairs of brothers on either side of the football. 28th play coming up for Mark Carmel. Prospect has run 12 thus far. The pitch goes to Dorch. And he's gang tackled, but not before he gets it to the 41 yard line. A penalty marker is down on the play after the gain of five, but this one's going to come back on a holding call against Mount Carmel. And usually that happens when you get to the outside level. And one of the wide receivers will latch on to a DB and get his arm fat, but that time Kriegermeyer did a nice job of bouncing that play outside, making the pile, making the caravan bounce the play outside. You see Larry Dorch averaging four yards a pop, seven carries for 28. Boy, they just eat up the clock. They just eat the clock, eat the clock, keep the change moving, and before you know it, you know, you look up at the scoreboard and it says, what, 624 left to go in the second quarter, and it seems like the caravan have had the ball here the whole first half. Then you don't throw the football, that clock keeps on ticking. As it is now with 6.20 remaining. 0 0 the score. Bruce Perlman looks on. Seventh year head coach for the Knights, and what a program he's established in the Northwest Suburbs. Second down for Carter Kopak and company. Swings it out. Nice catch made on the near sidelines. A little slap afterwards. Dorge took exception, and I think he retaliated, and I think he's going to get the penalty. And I think Dorch thought he got hit out of bounds, and I don't think he did. We'll see what the referee said. Yeah, I think Su Sulo took exception. And then he shot back when the play was over. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the offense. A 15 yard spot penalty. We will repeat second Lee, down. You always know. The second guy always gets it. Get doesn't no, doesn't yep. matter what happens. And again, Mount Carmel runs a little swing pass out to the sidelines. Didn't know if he was going to be out of bounds, but he thought he was, and he got tapped a little bit, took exception with it. And, you know, in the state final game, they're going to call everything close to the vest. So it'll go from the end of the play, not from the line of scrimmage. So they'll move it to the 34-yard line. And he'll bring up third down, 27 yards to go. Back at the Caravan 34 with just under six minutes remaining in the second quarter. Third, down and third and half a mile for the Caravan. Yard line. Yeah, one of those, you need a calling card to <laughs> get your receiver at the other end. On the reverse pivot, the option. And out of bounds across the way. Dominic Sulo. Tell you what, this game is a hard-hitting game right now. There's it's a hard-hitting game, but here's a counter option by the Caravan. And watch Pat Burton, number nine, come up. Kopak stretches it out. There's a pitch right, but, but here, watch number nine. Fight off a block and make the play. And look at coach goes down. That's football right there. The head coach gets his nose in there. Frank Lenny goes down, but he's tough. He'll be back. Just letting you know, Frank, you're still in the game. <laughs> It'll be a punt attempt here for Newcomb as he gets it away. O'Mara on the return, trying to get to the sidelines, and he's ridden hard out of bounds at the 31-yard line. 40 yards on the punt, 9 yards on O'Mara's return, and the Knights will have it first and 10. And look for the feature Evan Daniels a little bit more on this series right now. Talking to Coach Perlman this week and talking about his program and where he's taking it from since he's gotten here. He says that Daniels is probably the best combo back in terms of everything that he does that he's ever had here in his tenure at Prospect. But remember, we, we mentioned earlier that Bowman had not been the starting quarterback at the start of the season. But how much success they've had since he's come in at the fourth game of the season. Bowman off the play fake, and he doesn't have a chance to get the pass away as he is brought down quickly. Ron Newcomb coming in there to make the stop. And that's a coverage sack by the Caravan right now because Bowman wanted to go to the outside receiver. Wasn't open, and by the time he made the decision, 
You see that uh, Newcomb made the tackle, and you see, look at this, play calling by Mount Prospect, 38 rushes. Rush for an average of 206 yards, haven't got the running game started, only throw about 12 passes and get about 115 yards out of the passing offense, but really haven't got the running game established yet today. Well, you don't always run against the size that you're facing here in this Mount Carmel defense. They're coming on the blitz. Daniel straight ahead, stopped at the 32-yard line by defensive tackle Darzell Wright. And that was a run blitz by the caravan, and they had... Mark Oliver, the linebacker with 15 sacks, and there you see Steve Feiler, but you see the Mount Carmel defense, they had a run blitz. If Evan Daniels gets one more step past, if Wright doesn't make that tackle, he's off to the races. Brings up a third and nine for the Knights. Three wide outs to the top of the screen, one wide out to the bottom of your screen. Bowman sends it out, got a man open, caught. Out of bounds, first down. The big catch made by Patrick Burnton, 24 yards. But the guy who makes his play time is the running back Evan Daniels because they play action fake, and he picks up the linebacker, allows Bowman enough time to throw that ball to Burton. Burton, of course, had a great game in the semifinals against Belvedere, makes a big catch to keep this drive alive for Prospect. Had a fresh set of downs at the Caravan 43-yard line. Daniel looking for room, turns it downfield to the 40-yard line after he picks up three. Prospect getting the running game going, as we talked about before. He gets a nice block by Burton, the wide receiver. Watch Daniels. Look at the offensive line play. Slide down, slide down, but number nine, Burton, gets a nice seal block and allows Daniels right there. Nice block by number nine to cut it back inside and get five, six yards. What a job Burton's done on both sides of the football so far tonight for the Knights. Second down and seven. Again, they show blitz. Just getting it away is Bowman. Incomplete up to 22. Boy, he just got that ball away. He intended for Sherwin. And a great job by free safety, Mike Ferguson doing what a free safety supposed to do. Sherwin does a little bit of everything. He's got 20 catches for 545 yards and three touchdowns, but that time Bowman took a pop right in the chops, stayed in there against the Blitz of Mount Carmel, delivered that ball just a step more, and Sherman's got a catch. So it's third and seven now from the Mount Carmel 40. And a timeout taken by the Knights with 3.02 remaining. We will take a timeout. No score here in the second quarter. Prospect at Mount Carmel. We hear from our network sponsors. Take a look at Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois. So far this year, Prospect scoring-wise, averaging 25 points a game offensively, 11 defensively, and keeping that pace just about, maybe a little more defensively, in the postseason. Two teams playing their 14th game of the year. Prospect 12 and 1, Mount Carmel 13 and 0 in the 7A state championship battle. Third down for the Knights. Off the play fake. Bowman throwing. Incomplete penalty marker down. They were looking for Sherwin. Matthew Banks may have been called for the interference. They're going to get more for face guard because he never turns around. Bowman looking to Sherwin, tries to drop it in between the linebacker and the cornerback, makes a nice little pump fake, and look, he's double covered very well, but Banks, yeah, he jumped into him, never turns around to look for the ball, good call. See it again on this angle, yeah, dove right into him, never turned around. As you heard it, automatic first down. With the penalty moving the ball to the 25-yard line of Mount Carmel. So now this becomes Prospect's best scoring opportunity of this game that has three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Evan Daniel picks his way to about the 23-yard line. 
prospect that time ran a bunch formation with twip receivers up on top to the wide side of the field and Mount Carmel took the secondary and moved them over to open up some more lanes for Daniels to run through, trying to spread out the caravan defense. This is a nice chess match between Dave Lenny, defense coordinator you see right there from Mount Carmel, and also Coach Perlman for prospect of, you know, mix and match and trying to figure out what they're going to do. Second down and seven from the 22 of Mount Carmel. Straight keep this time for Bowman. Ran into his own man. He had a blocker and ran right into him. Otherwise, he might have had a first down and then so. He's going to be a couple yards short of a first down. We'll see Bowman. He's a little bit bigger for a quarterback. We see this is a run all the way. He just sit there and lineman pull and seal and gets it. Yeah, run right into his own blocker. Well, that's because Daniel was shoved back into yep. him by the defense. 18 yard line, third and short, third and two. Timeout is called. Mount Carmel takes its first timeout of the half. There's they, something they saw there in the formation they didn't like, Tom, because it looked like Mount Prospect had a matchup they wanted favorably, and Dave Lane, the defensive coordinator, you see right there with his defense, didn't like that matchup. And Prospect right now, you know, if I were Prospect, call the same play because Coach Perlman's got everything going on. And you sit there and you talk to these coaches, and you see Coach Lane right there. See their assistance and, and Sunday when I talked to the coaches this week is a very big preparation day and you know all the coaches we talked to you know the 5A guys as you see the score right there Sacred Heart wins its first state championship 2021 and Morris wins in a nice ball game against Normal but all the coaches you talk to are just great with their time and of course the, the marquee yep. game in 8A Linkway East and Main South that follows this game but they're so gracious with their time and you know, it's it's hard as a coach. You just sit there and want to prepare, prepare, prepare. But talking to the media is part of the job. And Coach Perlman, boy, he was aces. He would just, his class could be and gave well, me as much time as I would like. Both of them. Because yep. it's about the kids. Yep. It's about doing it for the kids. Third and two once again for the Knights. Bowman's going to put it up. Oh, incomplete penalty marker down. Looked like there was contact between Sherwin and Mike Ferguson. Bowman that time just threw it up for Sherwin because he had the matchup, the one-on-one -on -one matchup he wanted. And look at Bowman. He's going to say, go play, make a play, Sherwin. Jumps up, looks. He almost brings this in one-handed, almost tips it right back to him, stays with it. Bowman locks on him all the way, puts a lot of air on that football. Where only he can get it. Sherwin just a nice effort. Perhaps Ferguson leaned a little shoulder into him. That was that was close. Sometimes they let him play, let the contact go. That time they didn't. It results in the pass interference call. So it'll be first and goal for Prospect from the nine-yard line. A minute 25 left to go in the half as well. Plus, you may also have a scoop on your hands. When's the last time that? Either one of these teams might have been held scoreless in the first half of the game this year. Bowman trying to take care of that. He's yanked down at the seven yard line. Ryan Glenn got him from behind. On Carmel Caravan linebackers, you see nice shot of Ryan Glenn. 73 tackles and 11 sacks on the year. Very quick. They play at Gately Stam, so they're used to playing on turf. They know what it feels like. They know the response they get as they push off, so they're very quick sideline to sideline. Under a minute now for the first half. Bowman running out of time and goes down. He's sacked back at the 13-yard line. The sack goes to linebacker Mark Oliver. Mark Oliver, one of the best junior prospects in the state of Illinois. Of course, he's got the other guy, Steve Feiler, one of the best sophomores in the state of Illinois. As you see that uh, prospect's going to take a timeout, but just a nice job by Mark Oliver, 69 tackles. He's got 15 sacks from his linebacker spot on the season. He is just a blur. Big size, pro typical linebacker you see in the Catholic League. Take a look at that play again. Is not much protection for Bowman here. Well, Bowman wants to sit there, flash fake, and look at him come right up the middle, 
that's almost like a horse collar tackle you see in the NFL, but he sits there and brings it down to the ground. And both these defenses, you know, as much as the offense as we talked about, the running game for Mount Carmel, the passing game, the spread option for Prospect, the defense have done a really, really <laughs> nice job of containing these explosive, high-powered offenses. Yeah, this one, no mistake that it's a 0-0 game right now. This game has been dominated by two excellent defenses. This will be third and three from the 13-yard line. I should say third and 13, third and goal. Bowman caught for a touchdown by Brian Hanneman. Brian Hanneman just goes up over the cornerback and reels that in. Bowman puts it in the only spot that his wide receiver Hanneman can reel it in. With under a minute to go, Prospect takes the lead. Look at this play right here, Tom. Bowman sits there, he gets the matchup, wants, look at it, just puts it up just enough where only his guy can get it, turns around, makes the catch before the DB knows what happens. Six points for the Prospect Knights. Sherwin, 32 of 35 in extra points this year, out of Butkus' hold. The kick is good, 39 seconds to go. In the first half, Prospect on the board first with a 7 to nothing lead. You notice know, three times on that drive, Bowman threw that same pass route, got two pass interference calls and a touchdown. And he put the ball in the same spot each time, Tom. He sits there and threw it up for his receivers. And that tells you about their athletic ability because he knows these guys in Burton and O'Brill and Hanneman. Those guys in Sherwin can make the catch, the athletic play, for the Prospect Knights. They've done that time and time and time again tonight. And he used Hanneman's six foot four inch frame with the advantage on the secondary there. So the first points on the board are put on the board inside of the final minute here of the second quarter. And again, 39 seconds left in the half. And I got to think when's the last time that Mount Carmel was held scoreless in the first half. And that, that could very well happen right here. Yes, it could very well happen. you got to credit both defenses because both defenses have just been outstanding here in the first half of play. So in the kick. There's the kickoff. For Prospect and kick it away is Pat Ziegenfuss. And a bouncer. This is Dominic Sulo. He can be dangerous outside, and he's taken out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Just for a moment there, just for a whisker, it looked like he had a chance to go down the sideline. Still not a bad return of 23 yards. You don't think special teams are important? You got Sulo back returning kickoffs. You see Prospect scoring drive, 10 plays, 69 yards, eight up, four and a half minutes on the clock. Bowman, they hand him a 13-yard touchdown pass to give him the lead. They spot the ball at the 33 for Mount Carmel, where the caravan will have it first and 10, and just 33 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. As Carter Kopak brings him up with Sulo Dorch, the running backs, two wide outs to the bottom of your screen. Kopak throwing it down and overthrowing, looking for Mulkrone down the near sidelines. Burton had him one-on-one -on -one coverage, faked the fullback dive on the option, and he drops back and tries to hit Mulcrone down the left sideline. But Burton was there with him stride for stride. So far this game, Mount Carmel's starting drives have averaged at the 19-yard line, while Prospect their own 29-yard line. So that edge and field position so far has gone to the Knights as they have the 7-0 lead. There's their play so far this year for Mount Carmel. Off the fake, he puts it on his hip and swings it out near side to Dominic Sulo. That's Kriegermeyer, 62 on that tackle, Tom. Comes all the way from his defensive line position to tackle Sulo. And I bet you if you put him in a one-on-one -on -one race, Sulo wins that race every time. But this is hustle, this is desire. Look at 62, reads a sweet pass, comes down the line of scrimmage, and whap, makes that tackle from his defensive line position. That's a great job by Kriegermeyer. That's why Perlman says Kriegermeyer's value is not in his statistics. Mount Carmel with the timeout. They have one remaining. Prospect out of timeouts for the first half with just four ticks on the clock left here in the second quarter and Prospect 
with a 7 nothing lead coming off the game's first scoring drive. Still have one more champion to crown coming up in our final of eight championships. As you take a look as how Mont Carmel has scored this year and again kept the pace pretty much the same from the regular season into the playoffs. 36 points a game on offense, eight a game on defense. And I'll bet you if you talk to Coach Perlman from Prospect, as you see the Mount Carmel average, and you told him after one half of play in the state championship game, you'd be up 7 nothing. He'd take it in a heartbeat. Coming into this game, Prospect has won 17 of its last 18 playoff games. Mount Carmel, 28 of its last 31. So these two teams know how to win when it comes to this time of the year. Sulo on the carry to the 44-yard line. But that's going to do it for the first half. A defensive struggle. Prospect with the 7-0 lead here at halftime, holding Mount Carmel's attack scoreless in the first 24 minutes of this football game. And let's head down to the sidelines and Lee Hall. Lee. All right, we're with Brent Perlman. Coach, uh, you got your passing game going on that last drive. Well, uh, we did get it going a little bit. Obviously, we were helped by a couple of penalties, but uh, we need to protect a little better right now, really. I, mean, I think our passing routes are there. I think we got some things opening, but we need to protect a little better. Talk about the defense on both sides. Unbelievable here in the first half. Well, you know, I, th I think great defense wins championships, and uh, that's probably what's going to end up coming out here tonight. All right, Coach, good luck to you second half. Okay, thanks. And he knows winning championships. He's uh, won two in a row on this very field. Back upstairs. His programs in this title game for the third time in five years. Back with halftime of the 7A championship game, but first we'll hear now from your local stations. All right, we are back at halftime. It's seven nothing. Who's winning? <laughs> Prospect is winning, I think. Is that right, Prospect? Prospect High School cheerleaders are here with us at uh, halftime, and Becky is going to be our spokesperson. Let me turn right around here, Becky. Uh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Becky. How old are you? I'm 18 today. All right. All right. You can vote now. Good luck. Get after that. Tell me about... Uh, Tell me what it's like to be back here. It has, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, it's very exciting. I think everyone's so pumped up right now. Um, we've had a great like season. It's been awesome. Um, we've come together as a team, and we love cheering for these guys. They're really great players, and I think we're all enjoying ourselves a lot. So. Yeah! Yeah! Tell me what We Are One means to you guys. What We Are One is what the football boys, that's their motto for the year, um, but we like to think of it as our cheerleading team comes together and we're here to support the guys and we're here for the fans and we're here for each other and we love it. So we are right. one. I was gonna I was gonna take my shirt off and join these guys and paint up. I took my shirt off and they said something about the blimp and I didn't see the blimp. I don't know what they're talking about. Hey, give us a prospect cheer real quick, will ya? is all boys and they don't go to Mount Carmel but they cheer for them because they're way too pretty to be boys and I mean that in the best way possible non uh, sexual discrimination way I can possibly say what's your name Maggie Maggie since you're on the end you're the spokesperson okay Okay. all right with that all right Maggie is very sparkly this evening uh, tell where are you all you girls from Queen of Peace Mother Macaulay and Marion High School and there's no boys at those schools Marion, there's boys. Okay, but none of the other place. Not in Mother Macaulay, there's no boys. Oh, only girls. So tell me how difficult this is logistically to get you all together. You're all from different schools, and you're out here cheering for a different school. What's that like, and how tough is that to get you all together? And, uh... Carmel. That's why we're at Carmel. Caravan! <laughs> so it ain't no thing, right? Ain't no thing but chicken wire. <laughs> all right. 
I really admire you guys for doing that and cheering for these guys, even though you don't go to school with them. So let's hear a really nice Mount Carmel cheer from Mother Macaulay, Marion, and Queen of Peace. Queen of Peace. Let's hear it. All right, thank you, Mount Carmel cheerleaders by way of Queen of Peace, Mother Macaulay and Marion. God bless you, and good luck to you tonight. We'll be back with more from Memorial Stadium after these local messages. And we are back at Memorial Stadium in Champaign, the University of Illinois, and we are cranking it. Can you hear that? I wish you could get in here. There's a PS2 in this Humvee for the Illinois Army National Guard. There's a PS2. My son would love this. There's a computer with wireless internet and one kick, you know what, stereo. Can you hear? This stereo is as big. If there was a roof on this place, we'd blow the roof off. Now I got to figure out if I can get out of here. Sergeant, I may need help getting out. <laughs> Oh my, that is beautiful. That is the Humvee for the Illinois Army National Guard, the Patriot, Sergeant Jerry Pate. John Pate, I'm sorry. I knew I'd mess that up. Sorry, John, Sergeant. The Patriot, that is a beautiful automobile. Yes, yeah, awesome. It's an outstanding vehicle that the Illinois National Guard put together. It's uh, basically a marketing tool for uh, to show our youth, you know, that we can roll in a, you know, camouflage Hummer uh, when we're out in uh, warfare, but we can also hang out in the city and have fun also. You all are very visible at uh, all the IHSA state events. Tell me about uh, the message you get out and, and how successful you are as far as recruiting. Well, basically, uh, the Illinois National Guard is a community-based program. Uh, we have a dual mission. Um, part of our mission is support the state of Illinois. Another part of our mission is support the United States Army. So basically, we're showing the community that, hey, we you know, take part in community activities as well as other activities going on in the world, you know. So we support our community, this is what we're here for, and we're excited to be out here. Obviously a lot of our uh, men and women in the armed services are serving overseas in war type situations, but we've also seen with Hurricane Katrina and other events that, uh, that you guys and, and women contribute in a lot of other ways. Yes, uh, like I said, our main mission, you know, is to go out here and support the United States, okay? And basically, by us going down to Hurricane Katrina, we try to show our support to other, you know, National Guard units that we have in other states. So at that time, Louisiana needed assistance, and we went down there, and we stood ready and assisted them and get things taken care of. Well, we appreciate all you do, and good luck, continued success to you. Thank you so much, sir. All right, and, you know, if I could borrow that next weekend, that would be really cool. Hey, you can have it anytime <laughs> you want. <laughs> oh, all right. We've got that on tape, don't we? No? Oh, oh well. Oh, well, we'll take him at his word, though. The Patriot right here in the house at Memorial Stadium. Thank you, Sergeant John Pay of the Illinois Army National Guard. And we will be back with more. We are at halftime. Prospect with the 7-0 lead here on Mount Carmel in our 7A state championship game. And we will have more for you from Memorial Stadium coming right up here on these IHSA TV stations after these local messages. We are back at halftime. Prospect a 7 0 lead on Mount Carmel, and now for your entertainment, the award winning Prospect Marching Knights.
Prospect Marching Knights. That rivals any Division I college football band you'd see. Let's go back upstairs to Tom Stocker. All right, Lee, thank you very much, and thank you very much, Prospect Marching Band, I think is heading out to some warmer climbs <laughs> come holiday time. But take a look. Take a look at the stats, Lee, and despite the fact that Mark Carmel's clearly got the edge, where it counts, Prospect right now with a seven-point lead. Prospect with a seven-point lead and just 84 yards of total offense. Neither team with a turnover. Time possession just slightly favors Mount Carmel, but if you take a look and look at the score, seven-nothing prospect. If you ask Coach Perlman that you're going to be ahead seven-nothing at halftime, you know, with only 84 yards of total offense, really haven't gotten the running game established. He'd take that in a heartbeat. And with the biggest equalizer, the five penalties for Mount Carmel. Take a look, Mount Carmel, huge edge on the ground, 119 yards thus far. And you kind of figured that with the tandem of Sulo and Dorch sitting there eating up the yards for the caravan, but. You know, Mount Prospect right now, 7 nothing. I think that's right where they want to be. If you ask them, that's right where they want to be. Mount Carmel, they've done everything correctly. They've got Sulo established. they got Dorch established. Kopech has done a nice job. But defensively, both teams, Tom, have done an excellent, excellent job of containing each other's offense. And that's where a chess match is going to be such a great factor in the second half. Take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And believe it or not, some of them are defensive highlights. Why not? Only seven points. Watch here as Sulo wrapped up and taken down by Patrick Burton from the cornerback position. It's been a strong defensive performance as well for Mount Carmel. You see Mount Carmel, both teams' defenses, Tom, are very, very quick and very, very active. And you see right here Bowman throwing a touchdown pass. And look at this catch, turns around and makes that catch right in front of the DB for Mount Carmel, brings it in. Well, as you mentioned, perhaps this is right where Prospect wants to be, up 7-0. If you're Mount Carmel, however, this is uncharted territory. Not only are you trailing, but however, you are, have been shut out in the first half as well. We're also going to review our keys of the game from the first half. And I don't think that makes it much of a difference to Mount Carmel. You see Kate Crusader, Crusaders, they've got Sulu established. Captain Carter, Carter Kopech has done a real nice job. The Wide West, they've really contained this offense for Mount Prospect and really you know, kept it balanced. The one touchdown play was aided by a couple of uh, penalties against the caravan. Prospect, though, Max Sherwin has been a big play, but perhaps maybe it's been Prospect's defense that's been the star and maybe the best player right now both ways, Patrick Burton. Pat Burton also. Patrick Mack has done a nice job. Sherwin and Brody have done a nice job of running down that running attack for the caravan. Quick on quick, and that's the key. Neither team can run sideline to sideline, it seems, Tom. Both defense are established, and both are playing very, very tough, hard-nosed football. Well, only seven points separate these two teams. We've got 24 minutes of football to go. Back with the third quarter after we hear from your local sponsors. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Champaign. A 7-0 lead for the Knights of Prospect over Mont Carmel's Caravan here in the 7A championship game. We've still got another title yet to be crowned tonight in our Class 8A battle as it'll be Lincoln Way East taking on the Hawks of Maine South. That'll be coming up following this one. We crowned eight champions in two days here on championship weekend at Memorial Stadium. Now remember, Prospect won the toss but deferred to the second half, so I would suspect they will open up with the football. You would expect they would take the football and try to build another 7 nothing lead, and, and Mount Carmel right now, both teams stretching out in the three-minute warm-up period. Don't really have to make any adjustments, Tom. They've got to sit there and do the same things they've done in the first half. All right, down to the sidelines in Lee Hall. Frank Lenti, Coach, uh, a great defensive struggle in the first half. What did you tell your team at halftime? Well, we had to cut out the foolish penalties. I mean, in their scoring drive, we had three penalties, and we have to stop our own penalties on offense. I felt like we've moved the ball pretty consistently, but every time we get in position, we create a penalty that stops us. You know, make no mistake, Pro uh, Prospect's doing a nice job. We just need to tune up our effort and clean up our own act a little bit. All right, Coach, good luck to you second half. All right, Frank Lenti down 7 nothing here, but hopeful for the second half. Tom, back up to you. Thank you, Lee. And again, Prospect will have the football to begin the second half. As they lead 7 nothing. the Knights looking for their fourth state championship in five years. Mount Carmel looking for its 11th overall. 
And that's a testament to both programs, of course, the Caravan 10 and 2 in championship games over the course of their illustrious history here. And they're playing in their 13th, or 13th championship game. Brent Perlman, of course, won it in 2001 and 2002 and is back here in 2005. You know, since he's gone to the eight classes, done real, real well in Class 7A. Of course, last night, uh, Driscoll eclipsing the mark set uh, by Mont Carmel when they won four straight state championships from 90, from 88 to 91, a 6A and 3-5A. Mont Carmel also winning three straight championships, 98, 99, and 2000. The last two years, Mount Carmel, 10 losses combined, very uncaravan like In fact, you heard Frank Lenny Jr. say, hey, it was, it was time to win that and get back into the postseason. But you see where they're at right now. You know, the great programs bounce back, even though you have, you know, what some would call an average year last year. Right now, you're back, number one team in the state in Class 7A, and playing for a championship game, one half to go. So with the wind to Mount Carmel's back, it'll be Scott Saracen to kick off for the caravan. Not much running room at all. The return only goes to the 11 yard line as the return from Parker O'Mara of seven yards. And the Prospect will have it first and 10 from its own 11 yard line. About as bad a field position as Prospect's had to start a drive so far this game. And any wind that there is on the field right now as you watch this at home blown right to left. So the wind will be in the face of the Knights in the third quarter. Wind much more of a factor up here atop the stadium than it is down on the field. Matt Bowman has worked from the shotgun the entire game. Straight keeper, has got room, and he's got room to go. Out of bounds at the 46-47 yard line. A big game. Bowman had the big hole. That one was huge. Great job by the left side of the offensive line, John Bruce and James Power, but he got a lead block from his tailback, Evan Daniel, just a quarterback power. Look how big this hole is. Watch Daniels lead him through. He never gets touched until he gets to the second level. There's Daniels with the block, and there's Bowman one-on-one, -on -one and almost breaks it for a pick six the other way. 35 yards on the running play. Out to the prospect, 46, and a first down. Now Bowman keeps to the near side. And again, he's got a decent hole. Tripped up as he was coming through the line by Rayondon Kennedy, the nose tackle, number 95. And I think uh, one of the adjustments that Coach Perlman made at halftime was to get the ball in the hands of Matt Bowman and let him try and control this game and give the ball to his offensive line and say, hey, put the game on your back. And you see Bowman comes out, nine carries for 48 yards. Let the offensive lineman try and take a little control of this ball game for the Knights. So the ball now on the caravan side of the 50 at the 48-yard line. And it's second down. Get off the play action fake. Throwing to the sidelines, incomplete. Good coverage provided by Derek Sulo, the intended receiver, Max Sherwin. Nice job by the older twin in the Sulo set. He's older by one minute, so there's got to make some arguments right now. <laughs> Respect your elders in the household, of course. You know, the offensive coordinator for the caravan is Tom Sulo, the dad of both twins. And so that's kind of a nice, a family affair. You get down there, you watch your son, you get to coach your sons in a state championship game. How special is that for Tom Sulo? Like on that particular play right there, you had both talented sets of brothers represented. The Sulos and the Sherwins. Bowman again keeping. And he has been successful in quickly getting to the outside. He gets a first down to the 38-yard line. He carried the ball 151 times this year for 715 yards. He knows what he's doing. It's not even an option. It's just more of a quarterback lead as you see Daniels with a nice tackle right there, or nice block, I should say. But Bowman just follows his tailback and leads it through. It's more of a quarterback lead than a quarterback draw. Yeah, nice block by Daniel, a 10-yard gain and a first down at the 39 of Mount Carmel. Daniel the straight handoff. And suddenly now you're seeing some big holes opened up by the prospect offensive line 
as that game goes down to the 31 yard line as they picked up eight. We haven't really talked too much about Evan Daniel, the tailback. He's got over 1,300 yards, a coach's all state selection, but he got a nice block by his offensive lineman, Tony Marotti, that time to spring him. And Daniel's got a little pep in his step, and he's just one step quicker than the defensive line for the caravan right now. And of course, cheering Evan on is his brother, Anthony who has really been a rattling point for this team as well. Here is Bowman on the keep. To the 22-yard line. On the tackle, Chris Williams. But right now, it's become the running game that has opened up uh, big, big, big pluses here for Providence. And it's all Matt Bowman right now and Evan Daniels running. And that's got to be something they talked about at halftime because we've seen them sit there and move the football. As you see Bowman averaging six yards a pop on his carries tonight. First and 10 from the Mount Carmel 22-yard line. Perhaps the most impressive drive effect in terms of how effective it's been for either team thus far. Daniel, just as soon as you start throwing about it, Mount Carmel's defense, really tough. First to get him there, the defensive, I should say the outside linebacker, Ryan Glenn. Stuffing that play for very little gain, a gain of a yard. Yeah. Well, the guy who makes that play for the caravan is their defensive tackle, Darzell Wright, because he just forms a pile and doesn't allow Daniel or anybody else to get around him. You see Daniel, you know, 39 yards of total offense, running the ball and 10 carries tonight. Three minutes gone in the third quarter. Prospect trying to score on two consecutive possessions in this game. Bowman. Brought down from behind at the 20-yard line as Newcomb comes over from his defensive tackle position to bring him down from behind. And Ron Newcomb has been all over the field defensively for the Caribbean, sliding down very quick. And watch this Bowman you know, sit there. But watch Newcomb, watch him. See, 88, go right down the line of scrimmage, make that play from the backside. That's just great hustle and desire for defensive linemen. Third and seven, upcoming now for the Knights. Bowman, everybody's covered, protection breaks down, and he just wraps both arms around it and is able to get to the 19-yard line and bring up the fourth down, no gain on the play. Ron Newcomb again makes that sack for the caravan. Again, a covered sack by the Mount Carmel defense, forcing Mount Prospect into a, another situation where they're going to try a field goal here. 37-yard attempt for Max Sherwin. 8 of 12 on the year is Max. The holder, Andrew Butkus. Kriegermeyer is the snapper. Oh, he's got plenty of leg, but he missed it. Looked like it was wide to the right side. So Prospect comes up empty, but they still lead 7-0. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter as we hear from your local sponsors. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Still a 7-0 lead for the Knights of Prospect. The Caravan. Defense holding strong, not allowing the Knights to increase their lead. And so it's from the 20, first and 10. And off goes to Larry Dorch as he picks up two to the 22-yard line. Rick Richardson, the D-tackle for Prospect, does a nice job of going down the line scrimmage and making that play from the backside. And Mount Carmel's going to do the things that Mount Carmel do, you know, very well. Tom is, you know, run that very option offense. You know, one was going to break. Just over seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Dortz and Sulo, the running backs, as Kopak swings it out. Caught on the far side by Jefferies. He has spun around. And the gain goes to the 26-yard line for a pickup of three. And a interesting third down call coming up for Mount Carmel. And you see both defenses very well coached in terms of tackling in the open field. That time there's a great one-on-one -on -one tackle by the cornerback, and Barati comes in the backside, cleans it up. Third and four, not necessarily a passing down for the caravan. Mulcrone wide of the top of the screen. Go pack 
throwing over the middle. Tip, tip, intercepted by Mike Dazzo. Nope, they say it was down. They say he got it on the turf. The pass is incomplete. Tipped twice, and Dazzo nearly came up with a huge interception. Let's see who gets her hand up in here. Kopak looking, looking downfield. Does a nice job with his feet. Let's see who gets a tip right here. Oh, right off of Newcomb, looks like, off a of Mount Carmel receiver. And here's Dazzo. Does he make that catch? He tries to haul in one. Oh, just, oh, yep, ball hits the ground. Yeah. Tries to cradle it in, but just excellent effort by Dazzo. Did not have control of it, so it's fourth and four. And Newcomb back to punt. O'Mara. Ooh. Doesn't have much. Stuffed at the 39-yard line by a host of white-shirted defenders. 37 yards on the punt and just a two-yard return with 6.04 remaining just about halfway through this third quarter. Prospect scoring late in the first half, leading this one 7 to nothing. Talking to Coach Perlman during the week, Tom, he told me an interesting thing. He says, we never add during the playoffs. He says, if anything, we subtract from our playbook. We just do what we do very well, and we continue to do it. Which I thought was a great job by the coach, not adding anything, not clearing the kid's mind, just working on things that you do very well. Some very good editing, as yeah, we he, say that, in the that, media that's business. That's exactly what he does. Bowman, the quick fake. This time, not as much room up the middle as he had on the first series. Tripped up there, looked like Chris Williams got in there. Bowman, the leading ground gainer for the Knights tonight. About 71 yards and 14 carries, looks like, for Bowman. Really does a nice job of reading behind his offensive lineman. After the gain of four, it's second down and six from the prospect 43. Three receivers to the top of your screen for the Knights. Plenty of time, and now Bowman tucks oh. it and runs, knocked off his feet. Coming up to make the stop was Keith Lewis, the nickelback. You can tell Bowman's decision-making process. He's been here before. He's done this a number of times, looking, never forcing the ball into coverage. And that's one thing you like about your quarterback. He doesn't force the issue. He gets what he can get. If he's not open, if he doesn't have his number one read, he just tucks it and gets what he can get. And doesn't do it in a, in a panicky fashion no. either. He looks downfield, Tom. He checks to his number one receiver, checks down to number two. If they're not open, I'm going to tuck it and get as much as I can get. Third and one. And again, as they have the entire game, the ninth stay from the shotgun, even on third and short. And Brent Perlman called this time out from the sidelines. 4.34 to go, third quarter, 7 nothing prospect. And now we'll take time to hear from our network sponsors. Tom Stocker, Lee Turnbull with you. 7 nothing prospect, 4.34 remaining in the third quarter. On a third and one for the Knights. Bowman keeping. Breaks one tackle. He's very close to the first down. He was hit on the backfield by Newcomb, who couldn't stop him. And this one's going to be very, very close. We're going to get a measurement by the referee, Kevin McMurray, but nice job by Bowman putting his head down. And you see Newcomb, he has been all over the field, number 88. Not typical number for a defensive lineman, Tom. You know, you, know, you just don't see your D tackles, D lineman with number 88. Plays a little tight end for the caravan. And let's see, that's a right foot spot. Can you make the call here, Tom? Let's see. I think they got it. Oh, he's, he's pointing right there. That's where the point is, right there, my toe. All right, do I have a size seven or a size eight? First down, no, fourth down. Fourth down. They used a dirty football, they get the first down. <laughs> but of course they don't. They use nice brand new clean Wilson footballs. And you might, you know, think prospects should go for this, but the ball is at midfield stripe right here, almost at the 50 yard line exactly. So prospect Knights got a decision to make with the fourth and one. I think they're going for it. Boy, big call, big, big momentum builder and changer right here. I don't, I, I don't know if they're going to go for it so much as I think they might come out with a hard count and try to draw nope. the caravan off nope, They're dropping Butkus yep. back.
But just good hang time, not a lot of distance on it. And the Knights will let it roll as it picks up a couple of prospect yards to the 28 yard line. 23 yards on the punt. And so this defensive struggle continues with prospect hanging on to a 7 0 lead. And right now, if I'm Coach Lindy in the Caribbean, I turn this ball game over to my offensive line, averaging 6 feet, 261 pounds. You know, let's try to get something established with Darzell Wright and Eric Gack and Arthur Ray and Novacic and Kavanaugh. Let's run behind the big hogs up front. Boy, look at the gaps in that defensive line there for Prospect. First down for the Caravan. Keeping Kopak. Wrapped up by three defenders as Kopak dives to the 34-yard line and picks up about six. You see Frank Lenny calling the plays. Got his little game card right there ready, and that's all he wants. Oh, the Karen Van rushing attack. Give me four, five, six yards of pop. That's all I want. Eventually, we're going to break it. And Coach Perlman, you know, doesn't wear the headset. He's constantly thinking, constantly thinking. A lot of guys don't wear the headset. I know Matt Seffner at Providence never wore a headset when he was down here either. Three and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Handoff goes to Dorch as he slams through the right side. About a yard shy of the first down, just out over the 37-yard line. See a good shot of Dorch right there. The other guy, of course, Larry Dorch has got almost 1,300 yards on the season as well. Brody makes a tackle from his linebacker spot on the back side. Fastly played here third quarter, Tom. Both teams four for eight in converting third downs this afternoon, this evening. This one's third and one. Sulo, first down, then some. Look out, he's on the move. He could go all the way. He does go all the way. 63 yards on the third and one. Dominic Sulo pulls the caravan within a point. We talk about it, we talk about the veer option. Give me four or five yards, then eventually we'll break the play. Look at this, breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle. And when you do that, you don't win the Tony Loss Award for anything. Best player in the Catholic League. Gets the Mount Carmel Caravan right back in this ball game. Sulo showing his great speed again, 63 yards. And now Scott Saracen will try to tie it up. That's the longest scoring run in a 5A title game, the longest run of any kind, scoring or not scoring. The point after. He is good. We're tied with 239 remaining. 7-7. That happened in a hurry. That happened big time in a hurry. But the thing is, what established that play for the caravan is they've been running the dive, the dive, the dive, the dive. And all of a sudden, he breaks one tackle, gets on the second level, and he's gone. He's behind the secondary, and he's gone. He's got the good enough speed where he can sit there and outrun the DBs to the end zone. And they got the Palatine defenders to completely sell out and collapse to the line of scrimmage. Well, you've got to honor that run fake, Tom. you got to sit there and honor the halfback because they run it. They run it, they pound it, they pound it, they pound it. Yeah, once he got through the initial blocking, there was nobody that could stop him. This is about what you expected. This is about as even a ball game as we've had here today. Both teams even offensively, both teams even defensively. With 2.39 left to go in the third quarter, we're playing starting again. So now this becomes basically a 14 and a half minute game. 2.39 left here and another 12 minutes for the quarter. O'Mara hauls it in at the 10. Tries to cut it upfield, and he was brought down at the 16-yard line, tackled by Mark Oliver. You see a lot of guys, the starting players on the special teams. Oliver, the starting linebacker with 15 sacks and 69 tackles. On the special teams, you see the Carmel Caravan scoring drive, three plays, 72 yards. Took a buck 25 off the clock, and of course, Sulo's 63-yard touchdown round to tie it up for the Caravan. Yeah, not much time of possession there, but 63-yard runs tend to do that for you. So now let's see how Prospect counters the Knights deep in their own end. 
Bowman with plenty of time. Off the fingertips of O'Brill. Near midfield. Mike Ferguson, the free safety among the defenders. That time Bowman tried to go play extra to the right side. Look him stop, turn around. He's going backside to O'Brill on a post. Hangs it up there. He's got a shot to make the catch, but look at Nice defense by the Carmel Caravan. Jeffries gets his hand at the last second. Ed Jeffries with the coverage and the free safety Ferguson coming over to help. So it brings up second and 10 from the 15. Bowman really with a handle on this offense according to his coaches. Bowman decides to call his own number. This one stopped at the 16 for a gain of only one. Among the tacklers, Darzell Wright, the defensive tackle. And Stevie Filer from his linebacker spot right there, number 44, comes like a blur from the backside to run Bowman down from the backside. And both teams would be content to sit there and play field position right now. If Mount Carmel can force Prospect to punt, they get the ball about the 50-yard line. Third and nine. Two wide outs to either side for Matt Bowman. The pass brought in by Hanneman. His first catch of the evening. Nice job by strong safety Derek Sulo coming in and making the tackle and forcing Prospect Nice to punt. Yeah. If he doesn't make that tackle, Hanneman could turn it up and get another couple yards and get a first down for the Knights. But a great job by Derek Sulo. As it was, Hanneman stopped a yard shy of getting the first down. So it's fourth down. And Butkus in to punt. Butkus, again, good hang time. Taking a lateral bounce and a bit of a Mount Carmel bounce before it's down just on the prospect side of midfield, a 25-yard punt and great field position. Mount Carmel, who didn't have very good field position through most of the first half, gets it in great shape here. And of course, Mount Carmel had the average so-so season last year by most aspects, but Coach Frank Lenny had said, as he coached Proven right there, he said after the first St. Rita game where they beat the Mustangs the first time and they beat them in the playoffs, he said the players really, really responded and talked about believing in the program. You see Brent Perlman again for the Prospect Knights, you know, been the head man, won two state championships himself, and he says his success is a byproduct of his kids. I asked him this week, is it more of the system or the players? He said, no, no, it's a byproduct of the kids. We're successful because of the way the kids are. He said they're a great group of kids. He says we don't add anything during the playoffs. And he says the reason why I'm so successful is because of my kids, my players. In this half, Mount Carmel's drives have averaged at their own 30 yard line after just 19 yard line. They average starting for each drive in the first half. So Mount Carmel coming off the big electrifying run by Sulo of 63 yards. Here it is at the 49 of Mount Prospect. Keeping is Kopak. Quarterback turns it down to the 45 yard line and picks up four. Tony Barati has been all over the field defensively for the Knights tonight. He really hustles down that line of scrimmage. All state selection. He's got five sacks, 50 tackles on the year with the 20 assists or so, but he really runs that play down from the backside and closes the gap. See a nice shot of 57 right there, Tony Barati. Prospect runs the 4-3 defensive scheme. Second down and six. And the running play straight ahead is Sulo getting just a yard or so to the 44-yard line. Rick Richardson, number 45 for the Knights, does a nice job of creating a pile, not letting that fullback get onto that second level. As you see, we're going to be about 30 seconds left to go in this half. And look at the rushing yards from Mount Carmel. 199, Tom, to just 29 passing yards. And Prospect, 116 yards rushing and 55 passing. So both teams offensively pretty even. And probably Mount Carmel's last play with the win at its back with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. A swing pass over on the far sideline. Oh, nice step inside by Jeffries to get extra yardage after the catch. Nice catch and run by Jeffries for a first down, a gain of 11. 
Nice play call by the caravan. They run a zigzag route with Jeffries. Fakes inside, breaks it to the outside. You see Coach Lang on the field. But just a nice job of a pitch and catch. Very simple play, but it's a zigzag route. It gets enough for a first down for the caravan. Final seconds running off the clock. And Kopak will not get a playoff. That's the end of the third quarter. And we are all dead even. Steven, Prospect 7, Mount Carmel 7. Ought to be a dandy fourth quarter coming up in this battle for the 7A state championship. But first, we'll hear from your local sponsors. Twelve minutes to go. Prospect and Mount Carmel tied seven all. We are with Alan Daniel and his lovely mother Tishla here on the Prospect sideline. Alan, you can hear the fans chanting your name, Alan. That feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, does he? Yeah. Alan is uh, mentally challenged, and his brother Evan is on the football team. Alan has got all the plays right here. Tell me what happens after every game. Every game, um, we, we tell them pass the lead. Yeah, we got my practice. And then you get to run a play, right? Yes, I am. And then you get a touchdown, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, give me five on that. All right, Tishla, tell me, tell me what this has meant to Allen to be brought in as a part of this team. He kind of tagged along with brother Evan to practice. You weren't too hip to that, but then they really adopted him as part of the team, didn't they? I am so elated that Allen has the opportunity to be a part of this team. This has brought so much momentum to this team. They love Allen, and they just have taken him in, and they have just embraced Allen, and has done so much for his self-esteem and so much for his personality. He just loves the Prospects team. They love him. You have been busy the whole game. You've been helping the cheerleaders. You've been getting the fans fired up. You were helping them with long snaps here. You do a little everything for this team, don't you? Yes, I do. Who's going to win tonight? Prospect. All right. Alan, God bless you, buddy. Good luck tonight, okay? Thank you, Tishla. All right. Alan Daniel, they call him the spirit of this team, Tom, back upstairs. Now yeah, we'll relay a little story about one of the coaches' meetings at 80. There's a fumble, and looks like Prospect has got it. The Knights have got it. Recovered by Dazzo at the 24-yard line. Carter Kopak trying to make something happen on the option. Gets a ball popped out. Got a hit on his elbow. Dazzle right now picks it up for the uh, Prospect Knights. A big turnover. Mount Carmel was moving that ball very effectively on his drive. Prospect was having a team meeting, and Brent Perman was talking about how the team needs to be better focused and needs to get with it. And AD cut the coach short and says, Coach, we understand what you're saying. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> From the 25, first down. Bowman hands it off as Hades' brother Evan Daniel battles his way to the 33-yard line for a pickup of eight yards. We have 10 and a half minutes left to go in this fourth quarter, Tom, but this feels like an overtime game about to be happening. You understand what I'm saying? Both yeah. teams are going to play very close to the vest. You know, I, I, I smell overtime all of a sudden. Mark it down. He said it first with 10.20 to go in the half. It could go to overtime. That's, this game has had the markings of that all game long as Bowman completes it, completes it to Burton to the 46-yard line. Williams on the tackle, 14 yards, and a prospect first down. Nice job by Bowman finding Burton in the seam, looks downfield, looks downfield. Look at number nine, Sillin, gives him a nice target. See how he turned his shoulders and made an easy pitch and catch for his quarterback, Bowman. Cuts it back inside and gets enough for a first down. Plus, when you square up that shoulder, the ball misses your hands, goes right off your chest instead of glancing off into a defender's hands. Look at Daniel scoot through a hole into Mount Carmel territory to the 46. Another big gain on the first down carry by number 23. And when you watch this offense for Prospect, you get a, a sense of how well the running game is because the wide receivers block so well. That time, Pat Burton, who just made the catch for the first down, gets a nice block on the edge top to spring Daniel for another big gainer for the Prospect Knights. Second down and two from the Mount Carmel 46. We're deadlocked at seven apiece. Bowman with plenty of time to throw, airs it out, and 
incomplete looking for Max Sherwin. Covered on the play by Derek Sulo. Looking for Sherwin on the corner route that time. They faked it to the outside, try to get Sherwin behind the corner back on the corner route. Just overthrew him a little bit. Doesn't appear that the wind's picking up too much, but that might affect that throw by Bowman that time. Clock is stopped with 9.14 remaining. Fourth quarter, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Bowman hurdles through a hole to about the 42-yard line, and he gets another first down for Prospect. And the thing I like about the way that he runs the football, Bowman number 15 for Prospect, is he puts his arms around the football, but he lowers his shoulder. He's not a typical quarterback who's going to run that option and run that attack. Kopech does the same thing. They run over people. They punish people at the end of their runs. Too many running backs and quarterbacks want to look like the Heisman Trophy guy. Yeah, take care of that ball. You know, with the arm out and the ball with one arm around it. First downs tied at 11 apiece. Daniel, boy, he stopped cold at the 39-yard line. Still picked up close to three on the play. Big stop in there by... Steve Feiler, the sophomore linebacker, who has had just a great year. You talk about a guy that the Mount Carmel coaches crow about with his maturity, the way that he plays unlike a sophomore. I mean, not too many sophomores start at Mount Carmel. Not too many sophomores, but they say the same thing about Mark Oliver, the other linebacker. So they got both these guys back next year, and how scary is that? Second down and seven from the 39. Bowman, wide open, Brunton, down to the 19-yard line. Tackled by Jefferies. A penalty marker is down on the play, however. And that's thrown back in the secondary, so we'll see what that call is. This one, they pick up the flag. Oh. Will that Holding, play, declined down. by Prospect, and a first down. And let's see Bowman right here. He drops back, drops back to pass, looking down the field. He does a nice job keeping his eyes on a target, and look at that, crossing route to Burton. Burton gets it, cuts it back in, gets tackled right now. The holding occurred on the other side of the field, so they're going to decline that penalty time, and they're going to take the first down. So a gain of 20 yards on that passing play from the 19th of Mount Carmel. It's first down. Bowman. And a penalty marker thrown at the end of that play. And that's probably going to be a makeup call. You don't want to say anything about that, but it looks like it's going to be holding against Prospect. Usually that's what happens when referee throws a flag in that area. During the run, we have a five yard face mask. Face mask. Face mask. Face mask. Face mask. Face mask. Repeat first down after a five yard advance. And of course, on the first touchdown drive that Prospect had, Tom, they got benefit of a couple of penalties against Caravan as well to, to keep that drive alive and, and get the touchdown. In fact, first penalty called on either team in this half. First and six. Again, it's spotted off from where the foul occurred. Straight up the middle, Daniel. To the... 12-yard line. Evan Daniel going over the 60-yard mark for the ball game for Prospect Knights. And, of course, he went over 1,300 yards in the regular season, total season for the Prospect Knights with nine touchdowns on the season. Daniel, three touchdowns, 141 yards in their semifinal win over Belvedere last weekend. Daniel again sidesteps one tackler. Boy, did he do a job sidestepping Filer, but it slowed him up enough for the rest of the caravan to hold him for just a gain of a yard to the 12-yard line. Well, Steve Filer does a nice job of reading that play number 44 right there and shooting the gap and almost getting Daniel in the backfield. But when you're a linebacker, as soon as you read your key, the guy blocks down, you see that movement, you shoot the gap, try to make the penetration, try to make the play in the backfield. That's what Filer did to blow that play up. They call it officially no gain. Third and three from the 12-yard line. 
three wideouts to the top of your screen, and Bowman takes a timeout. We will take a timeout as well. 6.19 to go in the ballgame. 7-7, seven, seven, we're tied as we hear from our local sponsors. Six minutes, 19 seconds remaining. A big third and three here for Prospect at the Mount Carmel 12-yard line. Bowman faked the run, pitches to Daniel. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal for Prospect from the six-yard line. Speed option to the left side that time for the Knights. And because Bowman is such a threat to run that football, he gets the defense to commit to him and pitches at the last second to Daniels. Gets a nice job. Watch this. He brings the defensive right to him. Gives it to Daniels with the shoulder square, running downhill. Lowers the head. Great cleanup tackle, but gets enough for the first down for Prospect. First time they've run that fake from Bowman. Prospect in the red zone for the second time. Looking to capitalize. Bowman in for the touchdown. Bowman scores. He gets a great block by number 52, John Bruce. Watch how he seals it in right there. Gets on his man, gets on his man, gives him a natural crease, lowers down, breaks the plane. Touchdown, Prospect Knights. Well, Bruce Perlman said we have to execute and execute perfectly, and boy, did they ever on that drive, and especially on the scoring play. Max Sherwin's extra point is blocked. It is blocked. And that could prove to be huge before this game is over. 5.50 left to go in the fourth quarter. Prospect leads by six, as we hear now from your network sponsors. Welcome back. A 13-7 lead for the Knights, and now let's see how Mount Carmel answers. They've got lots of time with which to work. With the win, the kick. And Sulo on the return. To the 21-yard line. That's where the caravan will set up shop. A 20-yard return for Sulo. And now Mount Carmel has to answer. Best drive for the Knights all night. 11 plays, 75 yards, taking almost five minutes off the clock. Key right there, Bowman a six yard run, but he gets a great block by his offensive lineman, John Bruce, number 52, to open that hole. We'll see it again here on the replay. He does a nice job. We'll see this extra point. What? Look at the hit. Look at him up in the air, coming through that gap, selling out his body. Oh, that's going to be key for the prospect. That could prove to be the difference should Mount Carmel. Complete a scoring drive. Pass is incomplete. Well, they're going to give him the catch. Are they going to give him the catch? They the will catch. give him the catch. Never really saw an indication from the officials. Newcomb with the catch at the 28-yard line, a pickup of six. Again, lots of time remaining. On the draw, Dorch stood up at the line and driven back. Big hit there by Rick Richardson, working off his blocker and making the big stick. And again, smallish but quick defensive lineman by the Knights of Prospect coming off their block, sustained with there and gives Mount Carmel a third and two situation with 440 enough to go in this ballgame. So an opportunity here for the Knights to stop the drive if they can. Big third down conversion opportunity. Mount Carmel 6 of 11 so far in third down conversions. And a timeout taken by the Caravan with four and a half minutes remaining. And Prospect leading 13 to 7. See Mount Carmel Caravan, the fans sit there. Actually, it's not too bad. No. Yeah, hello, how you doing, guys? Exciting game. Yeah, it's a pretty good football game for a 7-8 state championship. 
But again, the weather not really a factor. We've been down here before where it's been snowy and sleety and rainy. And of course, you get those guys. I don't know what those guys are doing out there with no shirts on there, with the big MC on there. You always see those guys. Of course, you're wondering about those young kids we saw. How many of those will be covering in about 10, 11 years? <laughs> You do. You I mean, never know. Then look at both. Look at this. Even Steven. Yeah, Mount Carmel's run 47 plays for 254 yards of offense. Prospect 48 plays. Look at the rushing yards by the Mount Carmel Caravan. 209. Look at Prospect a little bit more balanced. 154 rushing yards and 88 passing yards. Time of possession right now. Mount Carmel 20 and a half minutes. Mount Prospect 22 minutes and 50 seconds. About dead even there. Here is Kopak, and he throws it behind Jeffries. Jeffries had come back towards Vina scrimmage. If he doesn't make that cut, that ball's right to him. And he was open enough. He, he would have had enough for the first down. Stops the clock with four and a half minutes to go and brings up a fourth and two. Well, if you're Mount Carmel, you got to kick it. Even though you're kicking it into the wind, you're going to give Mount prospects in pretty good field position. You got to kick this football. Scott Saracen, correction. Ron Newcomb, 88, is their punter. But they're not going to punt on fourth and two. Wide gaps in the offensive line. And no, they don't get it. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Sulo is stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Prospect takes it over at the 30-yard line on downs. Holy smokes. Nice job by Kriegermeyer and the rest of the D linemen. And you see him celebrating right there. That's a big play because that alley turns the momentum, but doesn't allow Mount Carmel a first down. Look at him post the gap and making that pile. No, he doesn't get it. Look at their Kriegermeyer's in there. Look at him diving in there and forcing them back. And they know right away he doesn't have enough for that first down. Four and a half to go. The way this game is has gone thus far. A chance for Prospect to put this one on ice. Here's Bowman with blocking. Penalty marker is down. Bowman out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Tackled on the play by Mike Ferguson, but this one's going to come back in a hold. Yeah, I believe it's going to be a hold or a legal block in the back. Boy, I tell you, Prospect defense, kudos to those guys especially the game plan they had against the caravan so far tonight. Did a nice job of stuffing it as you see the officials signifying the penalties against the Knights. But just a great job defensively by both clubs, Tom. Well, both clubs is... tonight has just, just been outstanding defensively. Uh, repeat first down. But so far in this game, Prospect has done exactly what it had to do, and that is Execute. Execute. You talked about that. Yeah, you can run the, the right plays. You can have everything called correctly. But if you don't execute the play like it's drawn up, you're not going to have success. First and 18 from the Mount Carmel 38-yard line. Again, Prospect took over on downs, setting him up in great field position. Daniel hauled down as he hit the line by right. Darzell Wright, number 78, comes down from his D-tackle spot, and makes the play in that gap, doesn't allow Daniels to cut the ball back. Now we're getting to be four minutes left to go in this ball game. And really, Mount Carmel's opponent right now is that clock, Tom, as it keeps on ticking down. And they have, Mount Carmel, that is, one timeout remaining. Prospect has two remaining. Second and 18 from the 38-yard line. Straight up the middle goes Bowman. Breaks a tackle. Has a first down to the 10 yard line. Whoa, did he shoot through the gap in the line? Straight quarterback draw by Daniel that time. Gets the block by Daniel. Bowman reads it and he gets a nice lead block by his tailback. Bowman, straight quarterback draw. Watch this, gentlemen. Gets it and look at that block by 23 right there. Cuts it back across the grain. Takes it down the right sideline. Look, he's trying to cut it back. And, oh, nice hit there, Arm. Nice tackle by Oliver. But another first down by Prospect. And you know, early in the year when Jeff Sobey was the starting quarterback, Bowman didn't sulk, didn't pout. He was there to support his teammate and the rest of his team. But boy, he's carried them a long way since he's taken over at quarterback. Is Bowman keeping it? 
to the five yard line or he's stopped by Mark Oliver. Bowman's got to be approaching. He's well over 100 yards. 21 carries for 100, 121 yards on the night for Bowman. 22 carries for 121 yards and a touchdown for Bowman. Really done a nice job of operating this offense. And right now they're going to take as much time off that play clock as they can. Bowman, who ran for 715 yards on the season, has been the story, especially in the second half offensively for the Prospect Knights. And Bowman calls his own number again. Touchdown, Prospect. Tread the offensive line for this hole. Look at Bowman does not get touched. Gets nicely blocked. Good seal block right there. And look at dives in the end zone. And gives the Knights a two touchdown lead. Now you have to think that they would go for two after the missed point after on the previous touchdown. Prospect will discuss it and take a timeout. Leaving them with one timeout left. 226 remaining in the fourth quarter. And as they know, help carry him off the field. I don't field. know if he's shaking up a little bit for selling out his body, but a state championship game, what do you expect the kids to do? They, they sit there and they dream of this and dream of this. And they're not going to sit there and do anything less than their best effort. As you see, another great drive by Prospect Knights. Five plays, 30 yards, $1.59 left off the clock. And Bowman again with another great play, a six-yard touchdown run. Tell you what, Bowman will have no trouble sleeping tonight. He has put in what a night at the office. Watch again on the, as he makes that turn, that lead block ahead of him. Wow. And he never gets touched until he gets in the end zone. So you got to credit the offensive linemen, those guys, for sitting there, you know, James Powers and John Bruce and Zuzovitz and Berzazinski and Barati for just having an outstanding effort tonight of opening those holes and maintaining on their blocks. So leading 19 to 7. Max Sherwin will kick the point after. It is good. And it's a 13-point lead for Prospect with two minutes and 26 seconds remaining. Big play defensively by Prospect stopping Mount Carmel on the fourth down, setting up the Knights in excellent field position, and the Knights convert on the 30-yard scoring drive and now lead by 13. Just taking advantage of exactly what the defense gives you as you see Coach Perlman on the sidelines, and he's looking at the clock. He knows there's 226 left to go in this ball game, but it's not over because it's Mount Carmel, and the Caravan aren't undefeated in the state championship game for nothing. Well, I'll tell you, prospect a program that had never won a playoff game until 2001 when they had that tremendous run to the state championship, beating Edwardsville. Mount Carmel, the dominant program of the 80s and 90s, returning to prominence here after a two-year absence from the playoffs. With the win to his back. Here is the kick coming up from Ziegenfuss. That will go to the end zone, a touchback, even though it was touched by Sulo. The momentum of the kick carried that ball into the end zone. So it'll be Mount Carmel first and 10 from its own 20-yard line. And look at how well the offense has been controlled by the prospect defense. Mount Carmel, the fewest points they've ever scored this season is 21. They've done that two times. The prospect night defense has held them to seven points here tonight. And held them scoreless in the first half. Precious little time remaining for the caravan, and they're down by 13 points. Go pack on the option to Sulo. Sulo wants to put it up, doubles back to his left, and is spun down to the ground inside the 20 yard line by Parker O'Mara, the junior cornerback. 
Nice job by Prospect Defense. As you see, they know Mount Carmel's going to pull out their trickery bag and little pitch of Sulo. He stops, looks downfield, it's covered. And here comes number 30, Pat Mack from the backside, runs him down, grabs him by the jersey, throws him down. Nice job, nice hustle by Pat Mack. Clock under two minutes. Carter Kopak airing it out, has Sulo wide open. Sulo with the catch and driven out of bounds by Dazzo at the prospect 48 yard line. A 31 yard passing play for Mount Carmel. Kopak again thrown against the wind. Didn't know if that ball was going to get knocked down or not, but Sulo does a nice job of running the out route, getting underneath that ball, and giving Mount Carmel field position inside the prospect 50 yard line. Mount Carmel needing to strike quick. Here's Kopak on the option. Dorch has blocking downfield. He's ridden out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Picks up 18 more. Suddenly the yardage coming in big chunks here for the caravan. The prospect's content to give Mount Carmel a little bit of yards. And watch this block by number five. We'll see on the top of the screen. It's a nice seal block right there to give Dorch an extra five, six, seven yards. Yeah, that was Jeffrey's downfield with the block number five. 131 remaining. And Kopak again with time. Deflected off the fingertips. Nice job by Burton, who was one of the big stars for Prospect in the first half on both sides of the football, and he breaks up the passing play there. Pat Burton does a nice job of turning back and getting his hand in the ball. Kopak thinks he's got the receiver right there. Look at that at the end right there. Just tries to haul it in with one hand. And we've seen more sellout plays tonight in this ball game. I've seen all day both teams playing with tremendous emotion, tremendous enthusiasm. You see Burton, 20 tackles, 10 assists, two sacks on the year from his cornerback spot. He's had a bunch tonight as well. Throwing under the coverage, Kopak. The receiver brought down, that is Sulo, 25-yard line, a pickup of five. A little check down route by Kopak. Didn't want anything down the field, couldn't find anything. Throws it off to his running back. And he spikes the football there, stopping the clock with 107 remaining. And Prospect with a 20 to 7 lead. And of course, we saw this in the 5A game, Tom, where team scored a late touchdown and tried the onside kick for. So if Mount Carmel scores right here, they're not yep. out of this ball game by any means. You see Kopak 10 out of 15 for 101 yards tonight. But first things first, they've got to find the end zone. And time, a precious little 67 seconds remaining. Go back the option. Here's Dorch. And Dorch is in for the touchdown. With exactly a minute left. Don't leave just yet, folks. And again, what a great block by the wide receiver, James Jeffries, to spring him, get him down the left sideline. Nice job by the wide receivers. Look at Kopech, but this is why I talk about the pitch. Look at where he gets this. Right in straight, right in his hands. Look at that block by the wide receiver, Jeffries. Gets right down the left sideline. Mount Carmel going to go for one here on the extra point attempt. 25 yards on the scoring play. The point after by Saracen out of the hold of Derek Sulo. It is good. And it is a six point prospect lead, 20 to 14, 60 seconds left to go in this one. Oh, baby. Mark Cromwell answers prospect scoring drive with a good one of their own. Seven plays, 80 yards, a minute 26 off the clock. Dorch with a 25 yard touchdown run. One minute left in this ball game. Each team with one timeout. Mount Carmel, of course, going to go for the onside kick. Now, why was Mount Carmel able to, to move the ball seemingly at will on this drive when they've been struggling against their defense all Sometimes, game long? Sometimes, and I don't know if Prospect did go to the prevent, so-called prevent defense, Tom, but sometimes when you're trying not to give up the big play, you give up small plays that lead to big plays, like, you know, the pass play. Now the nice run. But a really a better job of blocking by the wide receivers for the Karazan then was by the running backs. He's Coach Perlman right there talking to the referee. You know, he knows this ball game is far from over. One minute left to go in this ball game. You see the good hands team for the Knights up around that 50-yard line. 
Yep, the receivers, running backs for Prospect up. And I don't know if this is more nerve-wracking, not know where it's going to go, but Mount Carmel is going to say, we're going to outside. Everybody on the left side knows that that football is coming to me. And there's a chance I'm going to have to handle it. Saracen, as his teammates now head to the far side of the field for the onside kick, or the anticipated onside kick. It's a good bounce. It's up for grabs. It went 10 yards. The Knights say they have the football. It is prospect football. And boy, was there a battle for that ball just as it crossed the 50 after it went 10 yards. And Evan Daniels, the tailback, the guy you want on your good hands team, comes out of that pile with the football. And Mount Carmel got everything exactly the way they wanted. They got a great bounce. It actually looked like it deflected off a prospect night front line guy. Look at this. They executed perfectly. Look at that high bounce. And look at this. Oh, look at that. And all of a sudden, Daniels. He gets ooh, under that ooh, ball, and that still ball. lose. Ooh. I'm telling you, Mount Carmel executed that play to perfection, but Daniels, just because he's a running back, got good hands, took charge of that play. Yeah, Mount Carmel did everything you're supposed to on that. Didn't get the bounce. Is there a fumble? Nope, it's still prospect ball. Second down. Wow. For a moment, the Carafan defenders jumping as if they'd recovered a loose football. Boy, suddenly you feel like the wheels are wobbling a little bit here for Prospect. But, you know, these programs are so greatly coached. Special teams, defense, offense, the line play. Mount Car Caravan, the Carmel Caravan executed that play to perfection, and we're just maybe a half a yard from getting that ball back, Tom. Second and 12, 25, 24, 23 seconds remaining. Prospect has one timeout left. Mount Carmel has one timeout left. Going down to a knee. And there is the final timeout taken by Mount Carmel with 12 seconds remaining. Can't say enough about both defenses tonight, Tom. Really did an outstanding job, especially the prospect defense. Mount Carmel's offense has only been held to 21 points twice this entire football season. And tonight, they hold the caravan to 14 points. It's a great job of scheming defensively and keeping that option attack in check. As you see, Mount Carmel is out of timeouts. The prospect still has one timeout left. The most scored against Mount Carmel this year. Providence Catholic on September the 10th scored 27 in losing 46-27. St. Rita lost October 15th, 21-20. And St. Rita lost in the playoffs November the 11th in the quarterfinals, 32-21. So the big key has been Prospect's defense shutting down Mount Carmel's attack. There is a knee. Mount Carmel can't stop the clock. And for the third time in five years, Prospect comes away with the 7A state championship. The Knights win their 13th in a row as they defeat Mount Carmel 20 to 14. Just an outstanding ball game for both ball clubs tonight. Caravan certainly have nothing to hang their heads about. Finishes second in the state in class 7A, but Prospect Knights, and you see Alan Daniels right yep. there cheering his brother on, cheering the team on. Prospect losing losing their opening game, but coming back to rip off 13 in a row and a state championship. Lee Hall's got Brent Perlman. All right, now we're with Brent Perlman, uh, who, who's now being mobbed by his team. <laughs> so <laughs> you may have missed your chance, Tom. Give me a second here. <laughs> Where did he go? There he is. Hi, coach. That's all right. We'll let those kind of things go. <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, there's your lovely daughter. Three in five years. Kids play great. Uh, just tons of courage, tons of battle. I just, uh, I could not be proud of these kids in the blue tonight. Tell me about Bowman. Uh, he put on quite a show running the football tonight. Bowman's a, a, a great football player, a great kid. A kid that didn't start the season, and they had the resilience to keep fighting, and uh, here he is, he quarterbacked us to a state championship. You lose your first game, and then you come back, crank out 13 in a row. What a credit to these kids. Uh, you know, we knew we'd be a good team. What a credit to them, the way they improved all year. It's a, they're great kids, and they, they found a way to improve all year. What does it mean to you to get back and do it a third time? Well, I think it's more important to these guys. You know, I've been here before. 
I've had my championships, but now these guys get to have theirs, and I'm just ecstatic for them. Who's this lovely young lady? This is my daughter, Evan. Hi, Evan. How are you? Smile. <laughs> She's bashful. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That is Brent Perlman, and don't forget, Alan Daniels is going to get his touchdown run here in just a minute, so we'll keep an eye out for that and be right back to you. Thank you, Lee. Under two previous coaches, Prospect had made three playoff appearances and lost all three games. Brent Perlman lost his first playoff game. Since then, he's gone 18-1 and one in three state championships. It tells you he knows what he's doing a little bit. He knows how to coach this game. And you see Alan Daniels, number 54, <laughs> inspirational leader for the Prospect Knights. And, you know, that's a class act by Prospect. That you see him coming Look at over this there. Team. They're coming over there. You see Coach Perlman. He's got his daughter. And you see, there's Alan Daniels, the inspirational leader. There's more important things than football. Yeah, I know we just won, which is a good state championship game, but Alan Daniel right there, number 54, he means more than his football team. I dare to say than this trophy that they're going to receive. This is what it's all about, guys at home. People, this is it. This is family. This is great, outstanding. This is how much this family means to these guys, this football team. You can see AD mouthing the words, we're state champions. He's got his helmet on. Will they give AD one last play as they head down towards the south end of the end zone? And look at the smile on Evan's face. You know, his brother, the All-Stater, giving his other brother the football helmet to, to wear. And, and how neat is this? How big of a memory is this going to be for this family as they're going to line up? They're going to run this touchdown they're play. They're going to run the play it, for it, It's a tradition that they do after every ball game. And look at the hugs all around. And, and that's, you know, yep. if you can raise your kids to be as good as the Daniels family, I mean, you'd well, be a pretty good individual. I mean, how much this means to these people, that's I'll, just not standing. And I'll go as far to say you could say that for any player on either of those teams on the field tonight. I'll tell you. Quality young men, both sides. Proud chanting AD, AD. Got to get an ISO on, on AD. There he is back at the 15. There he is. Kind of reminds you of the fridge, doesn't, doesn't you, a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, he Hold does. Hold number 72. There he goes. He gets the handoff, and here he goes. And what a way to keep on the state championship as he dives in the end zone. <laughs> you got to love that. That's a memory. That's on tape. That's one of those moments that you're never, ever going to forget. But again, the congratulations go out to the Mount Carmel Caravan. Just a gutty, gutty performance. Outstanding job by Dominic Sulo and the rest of the running attack. Sulo finishes with 24 carries for 146 yards. And what a great 7A state championship game we witnessed tonight. Well, Prospect wins a 7A title. They've owned this division since it was created in 2001. Mount Carmel up in 7A for the first time. Obviously the talk of the multiplier, but you know, Frank Lenny says we don't complain about things like that. We take the hand that's dealt us and we deal with it. And what a classy, classy outfit they are, let me tell you. Mount Carmel could be competitive in class 8A. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make yeah, a difference could. because their football program, everyone in the state should try to emulate because of the success, because of the graduation weight, because of the way that they place people in, in colleges and you see the caravan getting their state championship, second place medals, but you know, Frank Lane's got nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to hang his head about. He runs a great, great program. Outstanding testament to him, his coaching staff, and that school. AD and ED. One of the great, great stories that we've seen on the turf here at Champaign over the years since the state championship have moved here to Champaign here at the University of Illinois. Mount Carmel gets its second place trophy just it's third in 13 trips to the title game. But I guarantee you they will make room for that and display it proudly a heck of a year as Mount Carmel finishes 13 and one. Beating the likes of Morgan Park along the way, one of the best teams in the city this year. Two wins over arch rival St. Rita. A win over Brother Rice. Some long faces, but again, over time, those players will realize the, the amazing accomplishment they had just to make it to the championship game. And of course, I, I'll bet you, if you tell Coach Perlman that he's gonna win the state championship this year, he's gonna take a look at you like you're out of your mind, but it's just a great, 
great testament to his kids, his administration, his players, that they stuck it out. Bowman doesn't even start the first part of the season, yeah. Tom. He comes in and leads into a state championship. And even Brent said, I, he said, I think we were trying to be a little too fancy early in the year. And we decided to simplify things, take advantage of what Matt Bowman brings to the offense, the, the strengths that he brought to the offense, and they wind up with a state trophy and one of the best coach programs, folks, in this state right there. And I thought it was very key talking to him this week as he said, we never add anything. If anything, we try to pare it down, try to edit and eliminate some things and just do the things that we do well. And that was give the, the ball to number 15, the quarterback, let him run the show, let him figure out what's going to happen, and you see what happens. And you see, look at those happy faces as prospect for Class 7A 2005 state champs. Their third state championship trophy in five years. Quite an accomplishment for the prospect Knights. And what a show both teams put on here. But prospect, if there was a perfect game plan, they executed it. Well, I was amazed at the way both defenses have played. I've seen Mount Carmel before. I've seen tape on prospect before. Let's do it on the radio. And I was just amazed at how well they were coached defensively. Not really any breakdowns and the way they flew around, sideline to sideline, just an outstanding job defensively. Even though the score is 20 to 14, this was a great defensive ball game. And our player of the game is down with our sideline man of the game, Lee Hall. All right, it's kind of hard to hear you down here with Matt Bowman, our country insurance player of the game, 124 yards, I believe, and two touchdowns, and you took a heck of a beating out there. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what to say right now. It's just such a team effort. I'm just so proud of our team. Tell me uh, what was different tonight for you that you were able to find the gaps and, and gain the yardage tonight? Well, I think our O-line just came off the ball so well tonight. I mean, they have a big defensive line, and we knew we needed to control the line of scrimmage, and they did that. They just did an awful job. Now, uh, if I understand it right, you weren't the starter all year. What? Uh, tell me about your story this year. Oh, uh, well, I didn't start until game four at quarterback, but uh, I don't know. Whatever's best for the team, I guess, I really didn't care that much as long as we were having success. I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether I'm playing quarterback as long. If we would have won it anyway, it wouldn't have mattered either way. So, tell me about the unity of this team, Alan Daniel. I mean, you guys go out and do that after every game, win or lose. Uh, it's inspirational for those of us who aren't a part of it to watch. What's it like for somebody like you, who's a heart, heart and soul of this team? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, just the way our team gelled this year was just so awesome. The way you brought in Alan, that's just one of the examples of just the way this team is together. That's just, it was awesome. It was such a great year. Congratulations, fine performance Thanks, tonight. Matt. Thank you. Thank right, you. Matt Bowman, our country insurance player of the game as his prospect Knights win the 7A state championship back upstairs. Yeah, Matt's already got his winter growth of beard ready to go as you see the <laughs> sign that, that says it all. Our defensive play of the game brought to you by the Illinois Army National Guard. And it was a night of strong defense for both teams. But this, perhaps the play of the game, Copac. The ball deflected and nearly, nearly intercepted after the double deflection. Great effort there by Mike Dazzo. Nearly picked it up. That's our National Guard defensive play of the game. We'll be back with more from Champaign. We'll hear from our local stations and a network break here on the IHSA TV network. <laughs> 